Okay, <clears throat> let's get going here. What's your position? Carl. Carl, I'm going to give Carl some time here because um, he's got some interesting stuff to <coughs> present. Um, and I think it'll be good for the YouTube channel as well. Uh, he's a former police officer, got his eyes awoken, and um, no longer there. But um, so he's got some interesting material about the right to travel. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Let me uh, get my. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. not. So we all get ready. Go ahead. given me some time this morning. Um, obviously he and I have spoken over the last few days, a couple of bits and pieces of information that I've put out and I thought certainly the rights to travel is an interesting point to cover on the weekend. Uh, basically because as people who want to operate as sovereigns, um, you at some point, as adults anyway, you're going to find yourself in a conveyance of some sort either a motorbike, motorcycle, or a automobile, a car, and you're going to come into contact with the police. And if you haven't already, you're very lucky. Uh, <coughs> but, yeah, you will likely, and especially if you're going to operate as a sovereign, you almost certainly at some point are going to get stopped. So you will you'll need to know what it... What you can do to defend yourself because when it comes to it you act as the sovereign you are acting as the, the, the king the queen and you believe that you can't be touched by their system unfortunately I was trained as a cop in the days the earlier days actually when um, there was still a little bit of a, a serve the public as part of the training now it's completely us and them completely us and them us the police them the oh, wow. the peons that is how they are trained there is very little in the serve and protect um, unfortunately as well they're hiring uh, most people who go in as a cop most will go in for the right reason they believe that they want to serve and protect they, they want to serve their community what you'll find is that within the first few years of service most of those cops will leave because what they find is that the reality of the job is not what they thought it was <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, and you are directed to do things that you don't want to do with somebody who wants to serve and protect. I managed 13 years uh, and I, I was medically retired. Um, I spent most of my career actually button up against other people, the knuckle draggers as I referred to them, nose to nose, standing up for my good name, my honour, and to, to go and do what was needed to be done on the streets to support the community. Um, that put me <laughs> in a bad position uh, in many, many situations. So, as I say, it's gotten worse now than it ever was then. And that was in the UK? That was in the UK, yeah. yeah. So... I've still seen the cops in Canada and I've seen the cops in the US uh, and anybody who tries to stand up for themselves in this current environment, even if they want to stand up for themselves and not operate as a sovereign, just stand up for not to be bullied by these people because they know that there's something not right here. Leave me alone. Uh, but no. You mean like asking questions? Anything, you know, you, you approach and even ask questions. but. The idea is that you have to acknowledge, we anyway, have to acknowledge that we are sovereign. We are self-responsible. We also have a responsibility to others to protect the system. 
So the whole idea behind what I've got to say here is simply that you are going to be approached by a cop, you're going to have to defend yourself, how do you do it? So the first thing that usually happens though, you see the lights come on behind you as you're driving, traveling, <laughs> and your first instinct usually for most people is, <coughs> oh shit, what have I done? Or, oh god, I knew I should have stopped at that red light. It's an instant reaction. So, there is a certain, um, there's a certain script there. Eddie Craig. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Many people may have heard of Eddie Craig. I don't go off everything that he said, but it, if you look for it, it'll give you certainly a lot of information that you can, you can use to comprehend what's going on. Um, because literally when you get stopped, they believe that they have the authority, that they are God. They can do what they want. They are the law. They have been taught the law and they have been given the authority to stop you and give you tickets up the yin-yang. And if you don't like it, they'll give you some more tickets. And if you don't like that, they'll arrest you because they think they've got the power to do it. You have to tell them in as nice a way as possible that they don't. Now, who here has actually done search on rights to travel or sovereign citizens and all that stuff? And have they seen the traffic stops where the cops have gone in, they've roughed them up, they beat them up, and then you've got this stupid asshole who's calling himself a sovereign doing it all wrong? There's thousands of them. Right. That's true. There's <laughs> thousands of them. That's true. They're doing research, that's how you learn. Yeah, well, you'll find well, out how not to do somewhere. it very quickly and very easily. I what you it. won't find, or what you couldn't find in the past, there are more these days it seems, that there is a right way to do it. And the right way to do it is not just, you know, wind the window down two inches and give him an attitude. It's not going to work. Um, you have to defend your position. He's making an allegation against you and you've got to say, well, no, I don't agree with that. I don't consent. And I have the, I have the right not to consent. And, as it turns out, I have this uh, little notice here, and I'm going to give it to you to read. Now, once you've finished reading it, and I will give you that time, I'm then going to leave. If you want to, if you want to continue to accost me, then bear in mind what's written in this thing. And I'll show you that, because I'll, I'll give everybody, or I can give everybody a copy of that, so that they can make it their own. Yeah, that's great. But literally it's a notice for cops or any other law enforcement. What you're giving them is the evidence that says, oh, hang on a minute, I don't have the authority to do what I'm doing here, and this guy's proving it to me on the side of the road, so I'm just going to leave him alone. You shouting out the window saying, I have a right to travel, I'm a sovereign, it's no power at all. Ineffective. It's ineffective because they believe that they have the right. See, in New York State, where I come from, they always have an excuse, your brake light wasn't working. That, well, they have to. See, they they, ha they can't just stop you. You're traveling or you're driving or you're flying, but your brake light is not working. That's right. Well, <laughs> I this is... I see cops stop somebody and brake the light. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, yeah. one of the things that I mention, and I have them, I have a uh, dash cam. So I have a front and rear dash cam. And then I also have cell phone that I'll set up so that it's on me, on the, it's on the interior of the vehicle. So I have the exterior and internal. Nice. And I'll tell the cop, there are recordings going on. Do you have your recording and audio device going as well? If it gets that far into the conversation. That's not the start of the conversation. Uh, and I'll go through um, just a sequence, a small sequence, that I would suggest is what you would use it, and a variation of it, depending on what happens with the cop. Um, but, yeah, they will. They have to, for a start, they have to have probable cause to stop you. They can't just pull you up and say, give me your documents. They don't have the right to do that. Many of them will say it. Oh, you're driving, you're on the road, I have the right to check your documents. No, they don't. They do not have that right. They have to have pro probable cause that you've done something wrong, even under the codes, the traffic codes. So, yeah, you, you didn't signal when you changed lanes. You didn't signal when you turned left. You went through a red light. You s you were speeding. You have a broken tail light that I just broke. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff is what's required from them. 
So when you see that light coming on, the, the, the point is that you have to release the fear right. and automatically go into a situation or a position of, well, what did I do wrong? Not the, oh, shit. Don't go into fear. When the cop is approaching you, wind down the window, but before he reaches the window, I'm not saying all the way down, and I'm not saying, as Eddie Craig says, crack it two inches. That just pisses a cop off. Because he can't hear you out there, especially if he's on a highway and the traffic's yeah, going around. Course. They can't hear. So, yeah, he believes he has authority, and you believe that you have the authority and the right to do what you're doing. So you're going to be doing this. So the point is, be nice. Start off the conversation nice. If he escalates it, then deal with it from there. But the point, and the way I go about it, well, he's saying, have the recording devices going. Make sure everything's being recorded at that point. Um, every traffic stop straight away, he might not know it, but you're in a, a detention, you're in an arrest. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as a, 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 a traffic stop for investigative purposes. Mm -hmm. You're in an arrest at that point, so he shouldn't randomize them. They never do. Being detained. You're, well, yeah, they say you're being detained. Well, it, you, your question is, well, am I free to go? Right. And if he says no, then I'm under arrest. Right. I'm not being detained temporarily. That is an arrest. You have stopped me from doing what I want to do. Whatever your reason is, is irrelevant. You have stopped me. Mm -hmm. I am now under arrest. If you want to question me and be, and be part of an investigation, then you must Mirandize me at this point. If not, then am I free to go? And the, the actual asking that question is giving them the option to say no. You'll end up in a circular argument because you'll say, well, I might be detained. And he'll say, well, no. Am I free to go? Am I free to go? And he'll say, no. So what do you do then? You're screwed. Then I'm detained. Well, no. I'm, uh, well, well I'm you are because then you get into that circular argument. Miranda says you have the right to remain silent. No, well, that comes you next. You still have that right. Yes, you always Even have that right. Even if he says no, you have that right. Yeah. Where do we go now? Yeah, and that's what that's part of the conversation we can get to as well is what you must do as as a uh, a sovereign being, um, as somebody who is reserving all of their rights. So the cops approaching the window, usually as part of the um, the process that I would go through, you can wind the window down far enough so that you can turn around and and look out and speak out the window as he's approaching the vehicle. It's better if it's not a big, busy highway because he's not going to hear you too well. Always have your hands in view. Don't be doing anything that's going to get him all uppity. Um, but shout out the window. I see your emergency lights are going. Is there something I can help you with? <laughs> What's the emergency? Right. That's, that's the first true. thing. Those yeah. lights don't go on unless there's an emergency. That's part of their procedure. They shouldn't be using those to stop people. For revenue. For revenue. It, that, the, for emergency purposes only. So straight away what you've done is you've, well the first question is, you've asked, can I help you? You're not assuming that you've done anything wrong. You're saying, can I help you? I see your emergency lights are on. Mm -hmm. What is the emergency? He's probably just going to say, oh no, there's no emergency. Now before he gets the chance to ask the question, can I see your documents or whatever else he's going to ask you for, you go straight into the next question, which is, oh, did I commit a breach of the peace? Peace officer. His answer to that will, no. <laughs> he's going to look at you strange. Why are you asking these stupid questions? But he's more than likely just going to say no. Your next question would be, well, did I commit, or did you see me commit an arrestable offence or a felony? We call them arrestable offences in Canada and England. You call them felonies. Um, but it's the same question. And then, of course, his answer to that would be no as well. At which point, well, if I've not committed a breach of the peace, there's no emergency, and you haven't seen me commit a felony, why are you stopping me? My next question why have you stopped is, do you me? have a warrant? <coughs> yeah, you could ask that too. That stops me quick. But a lot of, a lot of, they don't have real warrants. But they don't. Even if they have, a, if they don't have a fake one, they have nothing. Right. That's the point. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, if you know that there's no warrant, because you, you haven't really done anything that would, you know, ever. Well, they don't. See, they don't have a s authority to 
you know, they have to ask you for driver's license registration insurance because they need to verify who you are. So the point being is, is that they're not supposed to be scanning your plate and saying that, oh, this is Joe Blow going down the street and there's a warrant out for him. That, they're not supposed to be doing that. That's a denial of due process. That's an unlawful search. Mm -hmm. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. In my Correct. area, they got uh, uh, they got cars set up with all the plate electronic gear. Oh yeah. They drive through the parking lots. Mm -hmm. Picking up, yeah, and I'll just sit there and wait for the guy to come back to his car. Yeah, they they have all that stuff yeah. and more. But the point is that you can ask for a warrant. You know, do you well, is there a warrant? Are you trying to um, uh, what serve, a serve a warrant? Serve a warrant. Thank you. Well, <laughs> serve a warrant te technically, but that you could ask that question too. Um, it's just it's a process. Um, and you can change it to whatever the circumstances are. But in, in effect, what you want to do is get rid of the situations that would give rise for his lawful authority or even legal authority to stop you. So you've gone, it's emergency. No, there's no emergency. Breach of the peace, peace officer. No, there's no breach of the peace. Next one. You know, have I committed a felony? Or did you see me committing a felony? Are you under the view, or do you take the view that until we exercise these uh, rights and statements, we need to do the uh, corporate denial aspect, or are you just saying any you can, anybody, anybody can do this? Okay. Anybody can do this, just even if they're not a sovereign and they're driving a registered vehicle. Should be asking these questions. This is this is your right. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's right yeah. under yeah. the under the protections of the Constitution. Okay. Everybody has a right to do this. Ready to do it, though. No, you've got to you've got to be. Buy the ticket, then uh, buy the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. that's that's why you have all those videos of how not to do it. Um, okay, thank you. So yeah, you you, you do to have to go through this and be sure about what it is that you're saying, and which is one of the reasons why I, I provide this and give it the car because you don't have to say anything to screw up. The next point, once you've gone through all that, you're now at the point. Well, everything I've asked you, I've asked questions. You've not said anything. You've not answered anything never answer his questions. Hopefully at this point you haven't given him a chance to yeah, ask a question. Right. All you've done is you've, you've told him or asked him questions that you wanted responses to that, that lay out the situation that he doesn't have any authority. He may ignore me and just ask the question. He may he just go to my license question. registration. I don't want any of this sovereign bullshit. Don't cast... Yeah, I've seen that one too. Well, if he's in law enforcement, you should know the law. And there's, and exactly. there's some that will actually escalate right away. Yeah. And if you run into somebody like that, just calm down, take the ticket, deal with it later. Well, no, what you can do, yeah, and it's up to you, I mean, you, your ass, you can say, officer, right now I'm being peaceable, I, I'm not being uh, belligerent or aggressive in any way towards you. Um, you are shouting at me, you seem to have escalated, you, you seem to be in a foul mood. Um, you're the one with the gun on your hip right now. Um, and I feel threatened. I want your supervisor down here. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to speak to you until you get, get your supervisor. Okay. He has to get the supervisor down to that point. Mm -hmm. What you can remind him of, uh, officer, this has been recorded. All of this has been recorded uh, by me, by cameras that you don't know exist, even if there aren't any. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> even better. Even better. <laughs> that will usually calm them down straight away because then they've got the video evidence that they're being an ass. But you can <laughs> see this is how you deal with it. whatever they're going to throw at you. You have to be on the ball and right. deal with it. Drop the fear. Drop that well, fear. losing the fear is the biggest thing. You're the knowledge. You're the yeah, that's the problem. People say knowledge is power. It's not. Knowledge with action is power. Right? Yeah, true. So have the knowledge and then put it into action. But you have to get the knowledge, which is why I say read all of this stuff. Um, scroll down. Now, if, you're, if you are recording this and you're letting them know that, is it good to also recognize in that recording, whether it's an audio recording or a visual recording, to, to refer when you're asking those questions, like, Officer 1146, Officer O'Brien, did I... Well, at that point, you haven't even asked him his identity. Okay. So it's not even relevant. Yeah, at that point, it isn't. Sorry? They usually have a name tag. They do. They have the name tag. And it's, it's worth using it, uh, but asking them anyway. I asked for but this is further That's down. I, do. I asked for a person's car right away. Car. 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 Oh, yeah? Um, 
Yeah, they're supposed to, but um, what they will say is that here's my na name tag. Uh, and they usually have a. No, I know it's not. But for the purpose of recording this now, because you're obviously collecting your evidence, like you say, you build that case from the moment it starts. So I would be like, you know, rolling down the window. Good morning, officer. One one four, whatever. You know, Brian. How are you? You know, just that's it. You start that recording as proof. It's not a way that you can. Yeah, you can, but you've got to lead up to it, and you've got to be, you've got to be aware that at this moment in time, you've just been stopped. You're leaning out the window, and he's still ten, ten feet, whatever, eight feet away from you. You want to ask that question and get him before he reaches the window and starts his spiel. You want to go, oh shit, you know, this guy's put his head out of the window and asking me questions, what's going on? So you want to catch them out at that point and then keep them on the back heel all the time, asking the questions. Keep them off balance. You keep them off balance. And then you're in charge, you're in control a little more. They do, to you too. That's they what do that's what that to you all the time, so do it to them. Get that, but never answer anything that they say. Ask a question. Or answer the question with a question, always. And the question must always be to, for your benefit. So if you've reached that point where you've established that he has no lawful authority, then your what you should be saying at that point is, well, as far as I can see, you don't have any reason to stop me. You have, you, there's no reason that you've stopped me. Um, <laughs> you can just say, if I'm not being detained for any reason, then I, by default, I'm obviously free to go. Have a nice day, officer. Thank you very much. And drive off. Whether that's going to work or not, and whether you have the guts to do it, is a different matter. Um, most cops won't shoot at you for driving off, but it doesn't mean to say that they won't try and stop you or get in the car and start with the lights again after you. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I raised my hand a couple minutes ago. Enough. Oh, I'm sorry. I, w I didn't uh, see you. My dad, when he got pulled over, mm -hmm. the officer froze. Not always. Um, Not always, but yes, yes. they should. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, see, this is another one that I've seen people talk about before. Um, if you've got, it's not so much on the highway maybe, but on smaller roads, and you get those lights coming on behind you, wind the window down. <laughs> Pull over and wave them by. Have your blinker on. That was for it. Well, you're gonna a blinker's gonna be on and pulling over, but the idea is you you wave them on, wave them by. Keep going and, and keep going. You don't I've stop. Done, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. All the way to all the way to the next exit, a few yeah. miles. So <laughs> you're saying, I pulled you're over saying, and everything, and this guy was so irate. Oh man! Are yeah. you saying continue traveling? No. Well, that's up to you. Um, on highways, it's a different matter because usually they've got plenty of room to get by, so there's no reason for you to be doing this, really, because yeah. he's got three <laughs> lanes usually to to pass you. But if you're on a you know side roads or something like that, and the lights come on, then try it. Again, it's losing the fear. Wind the window down, wave them on, and if you if he stays behind you and the lights are going and the sirens going, then eventually you should pull over. But this is the next. So you're staying in your lane. No, no, you should you should not pull off the road, but pull over and still continue and give him room to pass and indicate here. I'm giving you room. Go ahead. There's some danger in doing that. I would think. No. No, it depends on the road. It depends on the road. On the yes. highway, would be funny is if uh, they're behind you and you pull the blinker to the right, and they still get behind you, so you put it to the left. Yeah. They're still behind you, and then eventually you pull up and go, "Hey, I, I moved over so you can go by. Why are you so behind?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's all sorts of reasons, and that's the same thing. It's exactly the same. I, I move over to allow you to pass. And that's all part of the the. It's a traffic stop, and it's all part of the process that they're going through. If you just be an, a belligerent ass as soon as the, you roll, roll the window down, he's, oh, this one's not going to get the let off today. <laughs> what can I do this one for? Just Start nice. Okay. Start nice. I mean, if he wants to be the ass, then, again, make sure it's on camera and let him escalate the thing. But then know how to control it. Um, 
See, the other thing as well that you can do when you get stopped, if you can, side roads it's easier, um, if you possibly can, pull onto private property. Yes. Mm. Don't pull over on the road. That Manny, I'm well. sorry, but you were like 100 feet from where you should have pulled up. Yeah. Right, right, like right there. The on the, the laneway. Yeah. Driveways. <laughs> on the grass or whatever. Uh, well, you've got to be careful because the, the, the sidewalks can still be construed as public uh, yeah, okay. and roadway. Right on but yeah, right on into yeah. private property. Yeah, six yeah. Feet. so that's, that's what you should be trying to do. Even if it means you're pulling into a parking lot. Most parking lots are not public, they're privately owned. Right. Um, so technically speaking, once you pull in there, you're a hell of a lot safer. If you're still on the road, then you get into the situation where you get your vehicle towed right. because it's on, it's on the public road. But I just, you know, I was grateful that they just towed my vehicle because they wanted to arrest me. Oh, yeah, no, and, and I get that. So I, you were I so get close if you just kept going slow and pretend they're not behind you. Like, put the lights out of your mind, just keep going slow, put your blanket turn, turn into the driveway. I was trying to make sure which house it was, right. and, and I knew you could that. could continue doing that. Right. Because yeah, they're not going to jump out of the car while you're moving. Yeah, they let them get his personal effects, too, before they tore the car. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, they were, they were, so they, that was they were reasonable in, in right. to a point I while they were policing I told them I was born of consular parents, <laughs> and that kind of freaked them out, and I was never a U.S. citizen. Yeah, uh, like, like I say, the problem is that they, they have a level of training that just, it's all procedure. I have to pull you over, I have to establish your name, I have to establish your age, I have to establish your address, right. and I have to establish that, oh, do you have a driving license? But that, and once you give them that, then all the contract's in place. Right. Everything's in place. When I, I approached the police officer, he yeah. said, all we want to do is identify him, and that would be the end. They always want to do that, which that is one of the reasons yeah. why these uh, common law IDs are great, because Technically speaking, there's a Supreme Court case, and I have a um, copy of a breakdown of it. Um, it was the basis of um, Tully. Um, uh, Terry, sorry. It's all about Terry the Terry stops. stops. The yeah. Terry stops. Oh, how was Terry? Yeah. Um, and they, they basically don't have the right to even ask the name. Yeah. Well, they, they have. They can they ask. They can ask, but they you don't have, have to right give to it. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to give it. Supreme Court said you don't have to tell them anything, even your name, because the name is property and it can be part of the investigative process that leads them on to <coughs> other things and that's, self, that's the self-incrimination stage. Gotcha. So simply giving your name is a Fifth Amendment violation. Well, it's not really a violation because you're giving up your right. Oh, no, if you give it to them. If right. you give it to them, then you are... Well, you're I, I didn't give you're no longer name. reserving your rights, I gave them which is why you never ask, a, a answer questions. Right. I reserve my rights. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the point where, okay, the cop has pulled you over. He's not going to let you go. So, at this point, you, res you resign yourself to, okay, I have to deal with this now. This cop is not going to let me go. He wants to give me a ticket. So, how do I deal with this? So he's going to ask you license, registration, insurance, or just license and registration. Sometimes he don't even ask you for insurance. You have to, at that point, say, officer, can I have your badge number, please, and your name? Um, can I also ask, do you have a recording device on you, video and or audio at the moment? He will, you will, he'll either do this, you know, and give you a badge number, some, or they'll actually give it to you. If there is a recording device going, then you can then say to him, Officer, his name, if you want, or just Officer, Sir, I have a recording device also, several recording devices. For the recording devices, can you please say that name and badge number again, or make sure if he did say it, it was loud enough that it was picked up. <coughs> that point you then say officer I'm reserving my rights and I'm invoking all of my rights I, I will not answer any of your questions and now this will be part of this will be part of the, uh, the sequence and you can do this from the Eddie, Eddie Craig stuff. So.
So here it's actually giving the codes that the cop's breaking at the point that he pulls you over without randomizing right. you. Um, now, the script that he uses is very similar to what I'm talking and go through the same process. Uh, again, sometimes I don't like what he does. Yeah, what he's doing here is, is what I've already done. You know, you've established that there's no emergency, breach of peace, and you know, crime, etc. So, yeah, this he's going through his little spiel, which is basically the same thing. I reserve my rights, I invoke my rights, and I refuse to answer any questions without um, without the presence of counsel. Never mm. say attorney, you say mm. counsel. Mm. Mm. Yeah. At that point, <laughs> he's going to, okay, what the hell do I do now? Because he should be aware that he shouldn't be able to answer, ask you any more questions. He will, anyway, but it's up to you how you proceed at that point. If he continues to ask you a question, officer, I've already said I will not answer any questions. If he's continuing again, sir, um, I am invoking my rights to travel. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone can have it. So this is the one I, I put together, um, basically from other sources. Okay. So this, in essence, at that point, then takes any issues away from what you're going to do verbally, because most people bottle it and they'll they'll stutter and they'll forget what they're doing and get it all wrong. So at this point, you would just give him the notice. Um, can anybody s can anybody see that? Is it? No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, it's a little on the small side. Yeah. Yeah. We can see it, but not read. No, no, no. no. Right and uh, plus, you <laughs> No, well, there's a zoom button here, so. I can see something. Yeah, that's it. All right, so. Uh, you'll you'll get a copy of it anyway, or, or somehow I can get. Email wise, so you have it. Before you continue, the, yeah. the, the new information about requesting the registration as a, as a peace officer, would that be. Yeah, that's yeah that was new information, and, and as yet. That it should be incorporated again. right at this point. Right or, right. Further, or, further, or, yeah, before early. this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, what is going on? As soon as he says, name and badge number, then I would hit him with that. Yeah. Right. Well, the reason I haven't. I business card, but I would hit him with that thing. Yeah, well the reason I haven't mentioned that just yet is because as Tara was researching yesterday, right. it Which apparently isn't, it's still ongoing, but it's not, um, it kind of concluded that it wasn't in all states. Not in all states, um, you're just only, mm -hmm. certain states are only just catching up with the idea that that is something they probably should have had in place, but the legal definition of peace officer says that it could be anybody that is a sheriff, a police officer, a correctional, right? of the peace. So we have to remember that regardless, it's a technicality whether or not this is something that's technically required or not. Right. But they're supposed to be representing that right. as, as an idea. Correct? So correct. That's, that's something I would try to keep in mind. You could say, you know, can you show me your certification as a peace officer? So well, peace I'll, I would well, ask good, for it. But why would get to that? Why get to that? Even if he doesn't know about it or, or it's not required or whatever. Because it's on the recording. It will, it will make him take notice and be like, Oh, what yeah. is that? That's well, he may say, I, I don't need one. We were watching. Most of you, I don't need one. We I don't know what that is. I don't need one. Because we we if I needed it, I would have had it. It would have been given to me. That's well, their yeah, thinking. That's right. <laughs> and be, you know, double check. But yeah, yeah. The same, exactly. same logic applies. Oh, if no, I had a license, I would have been born with one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, no, not the supervisor thing again. I yeah. call him again. He yelled at me yesterday. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. You're all right. Just when, be we, safe. when we went back last night, we were just watching an old classic movie, and of course, a police officer showed up in one of the scenes. And the first thing that was said, you know, the person said to the police officers is, 
is there a problem? Is there an emergency officer? And I laughed because we were just talking about yeah. this, right? right? How the universe works. Mm -hmm. um, but that it's a cultural thing. We have become conditioned to fear authority. Um, since 9-11, it's always, you know, militia, police state. Yeah. So you got to take back the, what we used to do, which is, this is a friendly officer, supposedly, right. that's here to serve and protect. They work yeah. for us. Right. The strong man. And they what most people right. tell you is, don't start trouble, just give him what he wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly what they want. That's what they want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Cowards. <laughs> Well, it's uh, funny, it's on a continuation of that, there was, um, the, um, like a, it wasn't 60 Minutes, it was one of those CBS news things that they do at, after 6 p.m. Um, basically, one of the news reporters went out, got from a store somewhere a police uniform, stuck a badge on that he got from the dollar store somewhere, and it looked like he was a police officer. And he went around the streets with a cop nearby, because it was all done in conjunction with a cop, and asked people for their ID and asked people for all sorts of things. And they just handed they it over. It there was 26 people, they said, within a space of an hour that they, they stopped. And one, who was actually an older lady, said, um, can I have your ID? And at that point, he just straight away he said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not a police officer, but you're the only one that's asked. Congratulations. And that's, that's the conditioning. So, again, she's right. It, it's all a condition. Get out of the matrix, get out of the fear. And, so and we get into this. And, and most people think, you know, if I'm nice, maybe it will give me a break. You know, instead of saying I was going 90, you might write something. Yeah, well, that's it. This, well, this is where you... Yeah. Know? See, they always ask you, do you know why I pulled you over? Oh, yeah. No, I don't know why. It's your business. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea why you pulled so it. I'm not a mind reader. Well, yeah. so my, I I stated that that you're off, that you are conducting um, business under commerce. That's not. See, anything that you verbalize to them, they don't care. Mm -hmm. All that they care about is right. that they believe they have the authority to do what they're doing. You have to say to them, by showing them, that they don't have that authority. I have reserved all of my rights, and I don't have to answer your questions. Which also means I don't have to provide you with any information, which also includes the driving license, the insurance, and the registration. At that point, there shouldn't be anywhere that he can go. Especially if you're not in commerce. <coughs> well, you see, this I, you've probably seen this. This is one of the things that I would typically be sticking on the back window, or even just on the um, the, 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 shelf. the shelf on the back window. So it doesn't matter as long as when that cop comes up, he sees it, because even at that point, you've just said. I'm not in commerce, right. so you shouldn't even be asking me any of these questions. You should have, oh, okay, you give them the notice. and I walk away. I just thought of something that would be really interesting. You have that in a big banner rolled up in the back of the car, uh -huh. and it's rolled up, and when the cop pulls you over, you hit the button in. Not in commerce, not behind. Hey, yeah. what's going on? A lot of effort. Good. Um, you, you furl your flag. I'd yeah. I had seen some I'm of these crazy yeah. YouTube videos like that it. said something about the cops tap the, you know, uh, brake light, just, just touch it or whatever. And sure enough, about well, a couple of weeks ago, I got pulled over because they cracked the windshield. And I, it was a state trooper. Same thing. I'm like, <coughs> what the hell? Yeah. Do you know why know. they do that? I have no idea. Do I'll tell that. you why. Do what? Oh, when the cop it? walks up, he'll usually be doing Take this and he'll just... Touch. I, I, touch I heard it one time, I can't remember. It's, why. Fingerprints. it's fingerprints. He leaves the fingerprints so that when he pulls up and you go bang, and he has off. no evidence uh, and take off. Then he has the, the car uh, to go. Yeah. Oh, so and he his fingerprints his are on, fingerprints on your right. car. Well, then we yeah. just go yeah. back and wipe them off. Sure. Only if you know that he did it or why he did it. I saw him do it. Now I know. Yeah, but that's the reason you can, why. You can wipe it off. They don't do it as much now as they used to. The old no, because they have cameras on them. They have cameras. cameras. Yeah, so they've but got uh, the, the they vehicle type. They've got, and they probably they even have the shooting right on the camera. Gathering, yeah. So, yeah, they don't need to do it quite yeah. as much. But with, with yeah, you're right. To the, the, the aspect, they have family at home. They know anything can happen. And so we should keep that in mind when we're... Well, know, this is uh, it. I mean, coming from my, uh, my background as being a cop, mm -hmm. um, 
my ex-wife now was worried constantly whenever I was out on duty because in the UK the only thing I had was a radio, a stick which we called a truncheon and cuffs. That's it. There was no stab vest, there was no bulletproof vest, there was nothing else, there was no pepper spray, there no expandable batons, no whatever, no nothing. So, you know, I mean, there's plenty of times I've been out, there's a couple of, um, many occasions when I've been attacked by swords. People have got friggin' yes, katanas. You know, and at that point, <laughs> you get the hell out of the way. Yeah. And you're calling for backup. You've got nothing to protect yourself. Yeah. Nothing, not even a pepper spray at that point. So you're, when you're out on duty, you're, you're policing by your wits. And guile and whatever else. These guys don't. They just you do what I say or I shoot you. Yeah, right. That's yeah. it. And, and you see, that that's one thing that pisses me off as well. Excuse the French. But it really does. It annoys me to the right. extent that I will swear sure. about it. Because the cops in Canada and the US, they have all these. They have the pepper spray. They have the tasers. They tasers. have the guns. They right. have all these right. other things. Yeah, Every single one of them is for defensive purposes only. Right. Yeah. They should never, ever pull them and use them for an offensive reason. Yeah, they do, they do but, yeah. but they shouldn't. And that's why every time someone gets shot, it's the reasoning being, I was in fear for my safety or the safety of somebody else. Yeah, that covers them. Because that's the only reason so they're supposed they to use them. Yeah, they you make know, it up. How yeah. many times do they get away with that? I mean, there's thousands of people since 911 that have been murdered by the cops. Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead again, sorry. I, um, anytime I run into, um, I have a concealed permit in Florida. I don't typically carry it. I carry a Florida license, even though I have Maryland tags and whatever on guns on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But uh, I usually, you know, not getting pulled over, try to avoid that in the first place. But, you know, anytime I run into a sheriff's deputy or whatever, you know, I engage him in a discussion. He's sitting there at the beach parking lot, whatever, and hey, officer. And, you know, I always ask them about their weapons and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we've discussed concealed and et cetera. And he's like, I, I always like to hear their perspective, you know, just to see what, one, you understand some, somewhat what they're thinking. And two, you know, they got some good ideas. Because my concern always, and part of the reason I don't carry, you're responsible for that freaking weapon all the time. You go to the right. beach with number one, why do you need a gun? Number two, it's in your bag, so make sure, you know. That's the big issue. They got a whole board of attorneys through the union that's going to protect them. We don't. To an extent, yeah. Right, yeah. right. But I always ask him, the interesting thing, one guy said, he goes, if you're carrying a weapon, he goes, every, it, you know, every situation you get involved in is an armed conflict. You know, and it may change your behavior. Yeah. This is part of what I think you're alluding to there. They know they got the gun. Yeah. You, we know they got the gun. But if you know you got a gun, you approach somebody else, he doesn't know you got a gun. Yeah. But you have a different mindset because you know you got that gun. Yeah, which is why... If you've got an officer that's going to, and I said earlier, always keep your hands in view. Right, right, right. You start right. sticking your hands oh, down really the side really of a really chair, really. Uh, he's uh, going to uh, draw quicker than yes, you can say yes. spit. Yes. Because so he doesn't know. He really doesn't know, and, and he's going to protect himself. Right. If right. he's in fear at any point, then that that protection kicks in, yeah. and he'll use it. Usually what I hear them say is before they get to that point, they go, do you have any weapons? In other words, he's saying, I might be fearful. Do you got any weapons? You know, there, yeah. yeah, which is another reason. Well, There's I'm another reason I, why I mentioned I, in, in here as well. I'm an unarmed non-combatant. -com the well, non-combatant thing is also part of the... Non-combatant. Uh, yeah, sorry, the um, military side of things. I'm not part of your war. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> let, let me let me clarify that too, because oftentimes, especially when I'm traveling to Florida, I am carrying weapons. Yes. You know, more than one. So you would change that. Change your script. You, you could you change the script and say, right, yeah. I am armed. My my um, firearm is a whatever, and it's currently stored. I don't know wherever you want to store it in the vehicle. In it in could my be. Backpack, yeah, <laughs> well, some of them have, um, I think in some state, in Canada, for instance, you can't carry a, a vehicle, a weapon in a vehicle, unless it's in a goddamn safe in the trunk. Right, yeah, well, right, that. right. What good's that? Well, so on, uh, uh, on your thing about that they have the union and the insurance and the attorneys and all that, right. 
uh, most gun owners don't know, but there's actually an organization that has that for you. Yeah, I think it's Gun Owners of America, and they give you an attorney to fight, they train you on what to say, what to do, what to do right after, and as it happens, all that stuff, which is pretty good. But yeah. Right. Though there are all ways. Well, well, you know, it's different if you've got a handgun within reach versus maybe a rifle laying in the back. So, I mean, I'm driving a van. It's, you know, the thing would be way in the back. I can't get to it. Yeah, and, and he may, I had them when they pulled me over, and they've asked, do you right. carry any weapons? Oh, yeah. No, no they, they absolutely not. Today. I'm, I'm unarmed. But um, the, uh, the whole point behind this is that you have this all written down for them. Officer, I'm giving you the opportunity to read this now. Um, so <coughs> the actual statutes and codes which give about where it is, the streets and boulevards, that's kind of a mishmash if you like. It, it's based on the Washington State one. Um, but in essence, the, the codes in any of the states all say amount to the same thing, They're just different verbiage, the because they all come from the statute <coughs> created by the legislation in Congress anyway. So the verbiage, if you want to go all the way up there, is right there. So in the case of this, dear police officer, code enforcement officer, government agent, sheriff, law enforcement, blah, blah. Before you presume jurisdiction right. and attempt to engage this common law private sovereign, into statutory law, i.e. public policy enforcement, revenue generation, that you can change this to whatever you want. To you. That's my choice. I'm a common law, private, sovereign. And later on, I identify myself as a traveler. Right. And, and that varies, sovereign, private, traveler, and I'll reduce it just down to private. Do you travel. read this to them, or? No, nope, you give it to them. You actually hand it to them because that becomes part of the evidential package. You, you're giving it to them. Yeah, so it's prima facie evidence at this point. He's in law enforcement. He should know the law, and you're citing the law. Now, he's got a problem if he violates his law. Yeah, he should know. And that's part of the citations that, I, that are also pro provided in here, too. The um, judges, uh, law enforcement officers, police, all these kind of things, they should... There's no such thing as... Um, Ignorance of, the law. ignorance of the law. They should know the law. It's their job. Yeah, that's so, right, especially in their job. Yeah. So you're telling them all of that. Real world, in your experience, what have you done this? It's 26 pages. No, I've not, I've not given an officer anyone. Had hadn't had to. Haven't so had far. To. No. Um, but it's, it's basically... It says 20 pages. Yeah, well, what I've done, i printed it out, but I do double-sided. So but the thing is, and it's not, because the 20 pages, the majority of, there's about 7 pages, I think, that I'm interested in in, in reading. Right. The rest of them are citations, right. and he can look at those <laughs> whenever he wants. That's like the footnotes. What yeah. was your comment? Yeah. I didn't hear the question or comment that he answered. 20 pages? Is that what you just said? You know, he's not going to read 20 pages. I see. You know, well, no, you'd be surprised, them. because I know well, I've, I've the seen... Page, the first half of a page is enough for him to say... Okay. No, well, yeah, well, what they sometimes do as well, and I've seen it um, because I've seen some more of the recent videos where people are doing this, they're being sensible, they're being polite, and they officer, please read this, this will explain my situation, come back to me, and we'll have a nice it's better day than verbal. after that. It's better than verbal, maybe. It's much better than verbal because it's now prima facie evidence, too, that they, it's discovery, and they should, if, you, if you're going to carry on, and start giving me tickets or arresting me or doing whatever, then when I get into court, I better see a copy of this on the evidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to try to hand it back or throw it in the car. Well, that's up to them. That's up to them. Because if, you, if they're really going to go that far down the line, then they're really putting themselves in trouble. Now, the line that I'm, I mean, here, um, where is it? This notice has been submitted upon demand of a driver's license, registration, proof of insurance, or any other state-issued privilege, permit, or license. However, just to prove the point, I am of sound mind, so I don't have any of this. I'm not an idiot. I'm not. A, you don't have to take me to the hospital. Right. Okay. I reserve reserve all of my unalienable rights and liberties, and I do not waive any of my rights ever. I do not recognise you, spelled British way. Um, that in legal terms. It's, it's not that I don't recognize you because I don't know who you are. I don't right. recognize you in law. Right. That's what that's saying. Right. Well, same thing to some extent, but 
it's a legal term and it's important. And I do not understand separately, not one word, your offer. I do not consent and await all benefits slash privileges and will not contract with you. So you're telling him you've outlined it right within the first well, one and a half pages. Yeah. You've told him exactly the situation. Right. I am not a person, a federal US citizen, a passenger. Passenger. If you have somebody else in the vehicle, by the way, in the car, in the automobile, right. they are guests. Yeah. They are oh, never passengers. Because okay. they'll say that. Right. See, this is where you can get yourself in trouble as well. Because if you have somebody who is in the car with you, the cop can then address them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They or they can say, them. yeah, and they can say, uh, is, you, is your passenger? And you say... No passengers here. That's my guess. So you don't speak. Well, you, you don't even answer the question. Don't answer. <laughs> you don't answer the question because at that point you've given authority to him. Because you've answered the question, firstly. And so what you, you, couldn't, you can say to him is, officer... I, again, refuse to answer any questions. Please do not address my guest. On the, on the last paragraph, the last part there, uh, and I, I will not contract with you. Yeah. We've had success with, I do not wish to contract with you or your agency. Because yeah. wish, wish is a man speaking. Yeah. yeah. I do not yeah. wish to contract That's with you or your agency because it's, it's an agency that they represent. Exactly, yeah. So again, well, it, this, is, this is the basis, and, and, and I'm sure as time goes on, I will redo this anyway, because uh, this isn't set in stone. It's just something I actually did a couple of months ago. I put together and I've changed it a couple of times since. Mm -hmm. So, going through all of that, state jurisdictions and what have you, but the, um, the fact that the conveyance truck or automobile I'm traveling in is not recorded on your state's register, and in my case it isn't, my vehicle, my car, my automobile oh, wow. came from Canada. It's not registered in any of theirs in the US. So that's why I've got that. Now, if you happen to get the car automobile removed from the state register wherever it was originally registered, then you can include that and keep it. I, I if not, then I, I will remove it. Canada, they have Agreements they may well have a and uh, powers of attorney with each other and all that. Stuff. They possibly do, yeah. but I'm saying that anyway. Um, you know, because it's all interstate commerce. No. You, you have a tag on there. No? There's yeah, a tag on there right now. Yeah, there is. The Canadian one? Ontario. Yeah, it's That's Ontario. Canadian. One of my concerns is I travel in a. I do not own a vehicle, so I use other vehicles mm -hmm. that are registered to people who wouldn't appreciate me having to get their vehicle out of pocket because I exercise my right. There you go. So you have your parameters set. Right. That's right. So I'm not... It's easy to fight if it's not your automobile. If it's somebody else's. It's easy. Because it's not registered in your name. Right. right. Yeah, I'm just borrowing this car and uh, I'm doing it by right to travel, whatever. Right. Well, if I'm but in this... Sorry. Sorry. But, so but uh, if, if it's people that are not into this, don't risk it. Um, if because they can get caught for allowing the use of a, their rented car without uh, to somebody that's not licensed. I'm canceling. Yeah. They're canceling their insurance. They're, you know, they're yeah. 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 Well, the insurance is another good uh, thing as well because they can technically they can't give permission to somebody who's licensed so their insurance becomes yep. so they can then be ticketed for right which is why I a have number of different things right. I know in, in Texas the insurance companies advertise that they sell insurance to people who are not licensed okay. and, and so that should be a good thing really right yeah you would think and so yeah. there's no reason why you can't have your own insurance like when you rent a car you use your own insurance anyway so you just buy your own insurance and and make sure that uh, you know, it's it's good enough to cover as whatever. a traveler or as a driver for driving. Basically, like they're not going to. Well, they did you say with no license they'll mm -hmm. offer you uh -huh. insurance? Uh -huh. Wow. They don't care. They just want to sell insurance. Right. Yeah, insurance right. is just a big money making okay, scheme. I've something. been driving yeah. 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. Motor motorbike for five years. I've got. I've had two accidents, and one of those was because a dog ran out in front of me when I was on the bike, and I hit it and went over the handlebars. And the second one, I was sat at a traffic light, and a low loader with a JCB digger on it came round the corner and ripped the front end of my car off. 
Primary, primary candidate to look into a bond. You didn't have, yeah. your, you didn't have yeah. your seatbelt on on the bike? <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was one, because I, I, I flew off that thing. I've got, I, I've got insurance. Um, I just carry liability because I've got a, a 97 caddy, but uh, mm -hmm. my insurance agent knows that I am don't have a license. And I've still got insurance. Okay, so it's, it's possible then in, in places. Right. Um, some of the cops don't even ask for insurance. I'm not sure if there's a link in on their uh, computer system. A lot system. of them, a lot of them require even it. Even Massachusetts doesn't have an insurance card. Mm -hmm. It goes on the registration, and some states enforce the insurance card, and they'll actually give you a ticket. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Ohio's one. Yeah, so they say, they say if you're going to travel to these states, uh, come in and get an insurance card so you can show it. Yeah. In New Jersey, it's my understanding, the reason they're not doing it is because when they run the tag, they're so well organized now, they already know oh, yeah. that there's insurance. So Actually, he asked me for insurance. I mean, I'm saying they, that's... But yeah, the they just wanted you to prove it, because you were out of state anyway. Right, he was from out of state. The yeah. reason why they ask is to, uh, it's evidence, they're gathering evidence at yeah. on the spot and if you're volunteering it, then you're basically consenting. Yeah. And and what happens also, at least in America, is all the states share information. In other words, yeah. Yeah. in uh, here in New Jersey, they're picking up information from all of the states, except there's five states that don't share. Like Tennessee is one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which other ones, but well, there's Canada five probably. states. There's actually a, a, a Wikipedia page about it. Um, but uh, but there's five states that don't share any information with any other states. And I would have thought so New Hampshire would be up there too because they don't even require insurance on. Yeah, they don't uh, New Hampshire is already yeah. falling a lot of that stuff. They already, but they they they're still better than most. Mm -hmm. But uh, Montana probably doesn't share. And the thing about Montana is, you can register a car in Montana if you're from any any state, mm. and you do it just over the mail. Well, really? Yeah. So well, even an out-of-state address South provided? Dakota. That'd be fine. South Dakota, South Dakota probably too. They're right there. Yeah. So they're them to make revenue okay. back. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, Sorry. go ahead. I had a friend of mine who recently got a ticket. And when the Highway Patrol, uh, he didn't have a license. And the Highway Patrol, they run a leads test, uh, leads search. And there was eight pages on the document. And the patrolman gave him page one. He went back to get uh, at the patrol station to get the other seven pages, and he's, uh, the supervisor told him that the cop wasn't supposed to give him the first page. <laughs> get right. a FOIA. Now you can get a FOIA. Now on the on the uh, page it said that uh, um, in one of the sections it says uh, do not arrest, do not seize the, vi uh, the vehicle, and uh, citation only. And it Good. said not mm -hmm. to take the plate. Or his driver's license, and he had a suspended driver's license at the time. Yeah, they know they have liability. They, yeah. you know, they've already yeah, bought these battles. Well, I think that the, there are more um, videos and, and more people coming forward with that kind of information because yeah. it's what, what there are more people doing it now and being successful long, because long the cops themselves are becoming more aware that the they are personally <laughs> personally liable on this yeah. stuff. And the job won't protect them. And they probably had success with this guy with settling tickets for less money or whatever. So they don't mind doing the ticket thing because they'll probably settle it and move on. Yeah. But other stuff they probably didn't hit on, and that's why they say. Those well, I know the, um, one of the, the the radio show that I used to do most recently, which was <coughs> I remembered what it was, the Centio Mentium, uh, which is a meeting of the minds. That's what it stands for, and that was one of the shows I used to do. And um, John Anderson, who co-hosted co the show, he knows somebody specifically out in BC um, that went through all of this process and was the same result. He found out on the computer system that he had the same thing. Um, you know, don't arrest, don't impound the vehicle, all of that stuff. Um, so it is, it's getting out there, even up in Canada, they're getting, getting it to, uh, to work. There's a guy that I heard about in Canada that he would deliberately go 20 clicks over the speed limit all the time. Mm -hmm. And the cops would come up behind him, cherries going, sirens, all sorts of stuff, and he wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. He'd just keep right on going, and the cops would follow him, cherries going, sirens going for a couple of minutes, and then they'd turn it all off and, and go on. Drive away. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't remember who that is. Right. 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 The reason that is, if you, if you think about it, is there's something in their computer system that says Absolutely. leave this guy alone. And so Absolutely. they go up, they see him speeding, they go after him, they're looking him up on the computer, mm -hmm. and he doesn't stop, and they see in their computer they can't do anything about it, so they just, they just turn it all it. off and go on their way. And yeah. The other thing yeah. is some states have uh, <laughs> done this thing of not chasing, no police chases. That's so a they, safety thing, though. Right, yeah. right. But yeah. that it could be in that case, too. But what they do is, you know, they try to pull you over, they can only pursue for so long, and after that, they got to abandon yeah. Yeah, they set up a roadblock further up. Yeah, well, if they can, they do. Uh, yeah, what I do you mean, do I, roadblocks where everybody is uh, getting uh, accosted there? Well, roadblocks is a funny thing because that I'm not producing anything. I'm not. One roadblock will be fine. Have a nice day, sir, on your way. Another time, they'll say, well, you had the opportunity to turn around further back when we gave you notice that this, this roadblock sure. was in place. But you didn't. You carried on in the line of traffic, and now here you are. So you consented to this. But well, I travel. I, you know, I, I bounce around, and I see a lot of reconstruction in areas. Specifically, I'm not, I'll, I'll notice specifically the toll booth, the hook set in mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Before that toll booth, is a big area for search. Okay. Okay. And on the other side of the toll booth, there's an area where I'm certain, if I'm thinking of this militarily. At the, uh, uh, a detention camp, control center, okay, major detention camp, wow. and it's right on the other side of uh, of an area where, and, and and they've expanded the road there, and uh, you know a lot of times I see these where they got the sound barriers, they ain't sound barriers because there's nothing on the other side but trees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's for containment. Yeah. And search, and a lot of times I'm they're sure on both yeah. sides of the road yeah. in that in that restrictive area. Oh, I've seen a lot of even in Canada where they, they're actually blocking off the, the entries to a lot of the right. highways, yeah. ostensibly so that if there's an accident, they can close it up. Yeah. No, that's not the reason. But anyway. one, one night I was going up to New Hampshire, okay, this was early in the morning, maybe about 2 o'clock in the morning, and there was a massive convoy of trucks, okay, and they had these <coughs> cubicles, okay, these were preformed cement cubicles mm -hmm. that they just set up as modular units prisons, right? But this was going into a hotel, okay? The hotel was set up as a prison, so everybody drives by, they think it's a hotel being built. It ain't a, a hotel. And there's another one in Rhode Island that was built the same way. I know one of the contractors are on that. It's a prison, okay? Yeah. Right now they're renting, mm -hmm. okay, as a hotel, but it's not a hotel. Yeah. So... The plans. We, well, we know what the plans so are. Don't we stay have in to. That hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It ain't the hotel motel. You can check in, but you can't can never leave. No, that yeah. one is truly a hotel. You can't tell yeah. anybody. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, let's, we better crack on a little bit. Um, so, again, part of this, he's reading this again, hopefully. He's reading this. Right. So, as a private sovereign traveler reserving and invoking his or her unalienable rights, this sovereign traveller has constitutional protections. I don't say constitutional rights because right. they're not. They're constitutional protections. Right. They protect my unalienable rights. The most important constitutional protection, as far as I'm concerned, is the Fifth Amendment right. I should change that. The Fifth Amendment. Um, to remain silent. I think that Fifth Amendment right was put in because it's, it's listed somewhere as being a right within the Constitution. Actually, there's, and there's a thing, and, the, and you know, it's up to you whether you want to consider this or not, but there's a difference between Article 5 and Amendment and the Fifth Amendment. And, okay. and so I always use Article 5 and Amendment. Okay. If it's, if you go look in the actual Constitution, see how they describe it in the Constitution, and it's Article 5. Okay. They don't call it Fifth Amendment. They're that's, also that's a slang. Yes. Yeah, uh, oh, yes. yeah, correct. Yeah. Under the original Constitution, they were all articles. Yeah, that's right. Under the new United States or slave Constitution, that's there right. were amendments. Because the right. whole Constitution is an amendment. That's right. There were, yeah. there were articles because the, there was no Constitution when they were incorporated. Mm -hmm. No, there, there was. was. An amendment. It was actually added to the Constitution. An amendment is after the after Constitution the is already ratified. Then they amend it. So that's why. Well, but the Constitution that, is. Don't is forget that the amendment is current. Yeah, the 
Constitution it's was it's whatever they're standard. using is current. It is. So technically, we we could still use that, but because we're not we're not taking the power of the Fifth Amendment as being ours. Only it's a protection um, of our unalienable mm -hmm. rights, and it's to remind him right, that true. he has to. That's true. Honor those rights and protections. That's what that's all about. Yeah. So the, that's what we're doing the, here. The First Ten Amendments, all they do is reaffirm con common law rights that were already there. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it called the Bill of Rights? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. First Ten. So they, right. weren't but they weren't killed. They weren't killed. They were articles. They weren't called amendments till when? They were no. When the, in the actual, if you read it in the Constitution, it's Article One in Amendment. It's Article Two in Amendment. It's Article Three in Amendment. Oh, so they amended the original articles? No, it's an amendment to the Constitution. It's called the Bill of Rights, but that's slang too. Mm -hmm. and, and Fifth Amendment is slang. It's really Article 5 in amendment. An amendment? In amendment. Article, Article 5, 5 in, in amendment. amendment. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, in a traffic stop, you're asking the law enforcement officer to obey the law. Correct. That's you really doing. Yeah, and but I'm unless you know the law and can articulate that and assert it, it's easier once. It, you see, he's going to have to go back to his car and then start writing stuff down that he remembers contemporaneously. That's what they do on the back of any tickets they give you. If you're if you're going to hand him this, he doesn't have to do much of that. He can just refer to bullshit that this civilian gave me. <laughs> right, but it's it's evidence, and it's showing that you know your rights, were invoking and affirming your rights, and he ignored it all. Right. So it's, again, exactly. it's evidence that you, yeah. you're gathering. No, he's in violation. He, yeah, I mean, he was in violation the minute he turned his lights on. So, um, isn't that a felony for him to turn on his lights? If I don't think it's a felony, um, th because I mentioned at the very beginning, it, you're only supposed to, as an officer of the law, police officer, peace officer, you're only supposed to use those lights in case of an emergency. They don't do that, they use oh, them they to pull people it. over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. one of the things when you're leaning out the window, uh, sir, I see your emergency lights on, can I help you? It, what's the emergency? And you, he knows at that point, oh shit. It's a piracy emergency. You know, you, you're telling him, you know that those lights only go on in an emergency. That's what you're saying, and that's why I include it. Right. So, to go on, on here, obviously we mentioned the Miranda warning. They, they know all about that. Uh, but it's reminding them that this is a traffic stop, and it's a detention. They should be giving a Miranda warning to you right Has at that, that moment. Has that changed as a result of the Patriot Act? No, the, the Constitution is still in effect as far as that yeah, goes. I, I think the yeah. Patriot Act took and modified some of that stuff. I'm not, I've not, not read the whole Patriot Act, so I'm not sure. And the Patriot yeah. Act only applies to U.S. citizens, mm -hmm. correct? Or slaves? Yeah. Maybe. So again, it, unless you're a terrorist. If he knows anything more about the, the Patriot Act, then by all means, if you think you're using that to uh, yeah. <laughs> to overpower me in any way, then please tell me. Tell me, so I can look it up myself, because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, he should know all about this. He should not have to be told by me about all of this. So, do not, I mean, you're being nice again. Do not take offense or be insulted because I choose to remain silent and not be compelled to cooperate with your verbal interrogation. Verbal intercourse. Yeah, you do not like silence. That too. But <laughs> you <laughs> so you're telling him, you can ask all the questions you want, but I'm not going to say anything. They get angry if you don't answer them. Yeah, but the, guy yeah, but the point the guy is that you're telling him warning. that... He, the anger comes yeah. from the fact no, that, that there is a... You and me, you've got two balls butting heads. He's asking you a question and you're refusing. You get rid of all of that because right now he should be sat in his car reading this. So there's no... He might get mad because... Well, okay, well, I know this guy's not going to talk to me, but it's not in your face. There's no confrontation going on right. at this point, That's why except for the confrontation with himself. Right. He's sat in the car on his own, usually. Exactly. Well, what if they refuse to read it? Yeah. Well, I'll I'll okay, well, let me cover that quickly, because if they refuse to, right. to read it, you can go to the point, which is a further down in, in, the, um, in the writings here, that's, that you say, I suggest at the very least that you read this bit. If you don't want to read the rest of the bit, I suggest you read this, and I'll come to that in a minute. So, well, and if supervisor at that point. 
Um, well, yeah, you would do that. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to be nice and say, look, I suggest you read this. I'm not being a dick about all of this. I'm trying to be nice um, because you're in the wrong. You don't say that, but in essence, that's going to tell him he's in the wrong. Um, yeah, so you're explaining what the Fifth Amendment actually is and not to be compelled at blah, blah. So all of that information is just kind of the citations about self-incrimination. Yeah, but so that was not given a Miranda warning. No, they don't. That, that's one of the things that they do. They don't give you a Miranda warning. But you are under detention at that point. You are under arrest. Right, but he's, in, he's required to give a Miranda warning. Yeah, but if you're under arrest. If you're talking, you're detained. If you're investigating, you have to arrest. Right. You have to just not yeah. And even then, arrest. they're supposed to Mirandize even after arrest. So, right. They suppose, but they never do. They and never if, they, do. if they don't, you get all that thrown out. Correct. Did, yeah. did you have to bring it up. Arrested. You have to bring it up in the police. Well, that's what I'm put, putting in my thing. Did the, did the peace officer oh. know that absent a Miranda warning not given, no, nothing can be uh, said can be held against me? Manuel, why not just it's stick it's to what Boris did? Why are you making it complicated? Yeah. Um, th I don't think there's any reason. Or He could do this as a backup. Yeah, you, you and say, well, if that's not going to work with them, if they're not going to go down that route, then okay. Well, that's what he said. Boris said, then escalate it. First, bring him the, this, ask him the questions, and then he said, then you escalate it. So this is what gets taken to their superior. Right. Yeah. And so this is what this is all about, though. This is about how you deal with cops. You, you start simple. Right. And then as it escalates you get the information and the knowledge to be able to deal with it as it escalates further. And that, Sharon, when you brought up that question, so was an Boris ideal. You know, what if he doesn't read this? Well, that's an escalation on his part. He's been an arsehole, doesn't want to read what you're presenting, which is evidence that he's in the wrong, and he's been a dick about it. Well, so at that point, right you either... Start. Yeah, you're building it right from the start. So he's getting himself further in trouble. Yeah. And at that point, you say... I can't deal with you. You've been belligerent. You've been nasty to me. I'm just I'm being peaceable about this whole thing. I want your supervisor. Get your supervisor down here. So and be quick about it because at this yeah, point I'm going to associate this. I'm going to tell you about this particular paragraph, which means which is the um, the Florida hearing for something like a thousand dollars for every five minutes uh, or whatever it was. One minute. Which I've got. Versus Tim. One Thank minute. You. Thank you. It's actually more than, but a thousand dollars is the reasonable. Yeah, rate. it's a little so bit you, more. You do it doing a little less than a thousand dollars. So is twenty-five thousand dollars for twenty-three minutes. Right. Yeah, and it was so like one point eight million dollars a day reasonable. for being detained. You know, so. Yeah. And I but point this out. I'll show it to you actually. So in fact, it's here. And you got right to it. When an individual is detained without a warrant and without having committed a crime, the traffic infractions are not crimes, the detention is a false arrest and a false imprisonment. Damages awarded, Trezevan v. Tampa, and there's actually a link for those that uh, want to see the citation itself. The motorist illegally held for 23 minutes and a traffic charge was awarded $25,000 in damage. The above case sets the foundation for $65,217 per hour, or $1.8 million a day. Hence, my warning about protecting you from yourself, which is actually what I put in the first couple of paragraphs. I'm giving you this and I am protecting you from yourself. Hence, my warning about protecting you from yourself. However, if you want to make me rich, detain me for as long as you like. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't make it sound like don't make it sound like you I, I love that. Cause, cause you well, know. I know, but the thing is, he gets the point. Yeah. You know, really. Um, I I know where I stand, and if you want to take me to court, you want to detain me any further, you want to be a dick about this, then it's going to get expensive for you. And they're, and they're I'm up to 144 contract. million dollars. Sorry. I'm up to 144. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing is, percent. yeah, okay. getting this stuff, I mean, you, you, you never get it, but collecting it, yeah, I mean, that's that's the hard part. But it, again, the, the whole point behind this is you want to, you want to drive away and wave goodbye. You want them to back down. Back down, go away, leave me alone. So that's that the whole kind of point. You can, t you can negotiate, take the cruiser so you can use <laughs> the lights. When Manny goes down to the uh, station, shouldn't he go ask for the complaint from the officer? 
I'm sorry. Yeah, we talked about that already. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They've gone through all of that. Yeah, they've gone through all of that. The thing is, he's going into a lot of other stuff. Yeah. And, and then we don't know what worked after that. Yeah. Boris actually did the thing for the police department, for the, ci the city, right. the truck drive, and for the tow truck drive. Yeah. It's yeah. already all done. I th in fact, I've got the birth certificate. I'm ready to make copies. And I go down there, and I have a very specific set of statements I'm supposed to ask. Boom. Period. Then if that doesn't work, you then go to the then city. It, then I go to the city, and then same I same thing. You're going to do the same thing at the city, basically. Right. After and that's then you're going been to go exhausted. To the After that's been exhausted, then I take this into the court and file it into the court record. Right. That so that's told. that is the final. What is it? Mm -hmm. After I've well, exhausted. Why are you working on that today when you should be doing the other stuff and well, be ready to go? Then if, right. it doesn't, if it doesn't work, if it works... I need to go make copies of my birth certificate. Yeah. So I wanted to listen to this before I went and oh, make copies right, of my birth right. certificate. And okay. I need to go get a, a bill of sale from okay. it. No, right, I hear. So let me just carry on with this. Right. Right. That's my uh, point. So I know uh, Glenn wants to get on with this. Yes. So as interesting as this might be for everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so due to this sovereign traveler's past naivety with statutory law, this traveller has since learned that one cannot listen oneself into trouble. This traveller now realises it is public official's intent to lure one into a verbal, then written contract. Therefore, this traveller must inform, remind you, of the reservation and invocation of his or her rights, unalienable rights, and not help you to coerce, coerce him into some statute of which he or she is not liable. So, this traveller does not willfully choose to consent to your offer to contract, nor to be compelled to incriminate themselves by answering any questions and thereby entering into any sort of verbal agreement. Unless you have a warrant for this sovereign traveller's arrest, i.e. a valid sworn claim of liability, or have seen this sovereign, sovereign traveller commit a felony, you have no probable cause to detain him or her as he or she has the right to free and unencumbered travel. If you are arresting this sovereign traveller without a warrant, you must immediately take him or her before a judicial officer of competent jurisdiction to demand a bill of particulars to determine whether the arrest was lawful or if there was probable cause for the arrest. Now generally they'll never do that, they'll just no. take you down to the cop well, station anyway. Well, the bill of particulars is never, uh, never issued anyway. No, it's not. But again, it's something further, okay, right. I know about this stuff, this should be provided. Because when a judge sees this, he, or even the prosecutor maybe, he says, oh shit, maybe we won't bother yeah. with this. Yeah, where's the bill of particulars? Yeah, yeah. so the next part of it obviously is um, uh, about uh, held it, holding them, sorry, personally liable and accountable for the false arrest which I then put in quotes, kidnapping, because in essence that's what it is. Uh, and they will be sued in their official and also in their private capacity. Um, and again, I re refer back to the uh, president of the city of Tampa. <coughs> so, uh, I'll just go down a little further. So that's most what, uh, on page three? Yeah, that's page yeah, three. So that's not too far down. He should have been able to read. Uh, Thank you. I've put all the relevant information oh, cool. within right the first couple of pages. Right. So the... He's not. I'm okay. He's got 20 pages, but most of it's citations. Is, is the important your, is, stuff is, is right now. Is piece printed out, colorized like that, highlighted, or are you, are you just doing this with presentation? No, I print it out that way too. You do. Yeah, I mean okay. the one I have printed here. Uh, right. Yeah, okay. So, so the so see. relevant points. Uh, yeah, relevant points are all in there. Yeah. Other. Great. So I'm just just reading from this this document. Great. Now there's another document in here too that I can. I refer to, and I think everyone should have it, because it's a, it's a legal brief that was used and is being used to get people out of tickets and out of traffic court, because right. it breaks down the definitions of what a driver is, what a motor vehicle is, and so on. So that is the important part within the first, and then I get right to the, right. the notice, which is in bullet point of this at this time. I hereby invoke and refuse to waive all unalienable rights. And I've already said it earlier on, but now I'm going in bullet point and getting this right in your face. I hereby invoke and refuse to waive my right to remain silent. I hereby invoke and refuse to waive my right to have assistance of counsel. Uh, yeah. Do not ask me questions without my counsel present as protected by the Sixth Amendment. I hereby invoke 
and waive my right to be free of unwarranted, non-court-ordered search and seizure. So you're not getting in my car. <laughs> I'm home in the door. Um, if I get out because you point a gun at me, which is a little bit later on in essence, um, I'm going to lock the car behind me. You're going to have to get a search warrant. And you're going to have to come down here and do it that way. Um, although if they're going to arrest me, technically they have the power after arrest to be able to search. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, search after uh, yeah, search after arrest. I, they I usually have that power. Planted. Actually, it has to be a yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why I took my paper. Sure. Uh, 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 I'm not so sure about that. Right. Because it's to get the evidence. If it's a false the arrest, they, if it's a false arrest, they have no rights. No, they don't. Well, I mean, that's quite correct. But on, you see, what you have to think is the way they're proceeding. There's a process and a procedure yeah. that they're following. So they hit one one procedure point. They go to the next procedure point. Okay, now I've arrested you. Now I have a right to search the place that I that you were arrested. So, so you go to the arrest being thrown out because there was no probable cause, which gets rid of the evidence. Yeah. So if they find any evidence, I mean, there's no evidence in my car anyway. No, but if they well, unless they plant something. If they plant something, they can't use it anyway. Because right. it's false arrest. No probable Ca yeah. Cause. Correct. So I mean, you're laying this all out for them in, in written form that you know what's going on, you're reserving all your rights, and if you want to process and pr proceed with this, it's going to get hard for you. Uh, this is so not going to be an easy $600 ticket, or, you know, a group of tickets, it gets you $600. Now, talking about the rest, um, I'll just get to this little bit. If you do not release me immediately upon reading this notice, I will presume you to be under the impression that you have authority and jurisdiction for my arrest for a crime. Infractions are not crimes, and consent must be obtained from the accused for any detention for an alleged infraction. Of course, I'm not given any. So, if you should be shown at any time that you do not have full authority, cause, and jurisdiction for my arrest, you will be subject to civil and criminal penalty and obligated to major remedy to me. You agree to those terms by committing any unlawful or, no or unauthorized force, command, detention, or arrest against me. If you fail to release me upon presentation of this notice, you will be required at a time in the, sh in the future to show cause for any non-consensual detention, arrest, which any detention is. Your failure to show cause and jurisdiction upon demand will cause major debt and obligation of you to me for all damages, losses, harm, injuries and violations of rights, in addition to possible civil and criminal actions allegations and reports against you personally. Under arrest and threat of violence by you and your armed law enforcement associates, because by this point I'm sure there will be several more there, uh, possibly anyway, uh, I will under protest be compliant and not resist any reasonable command you may issue unless I find it necessary to act in defence of my health and safety or the health and safety of others present as is allowed by law. I am competent to determine when acts of self-defence are and are not necessary and justified. Unless you unjustly and unlawfully assault or commit battery upon me, I pose no threat or danger to you or your associates. So you're basically telling them. Yeah. So, and the I'm other thing a is, business card that says, "Notice: I am infected and contagious. Please be cautious." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that could well get away with the whole thing. Yeah. And don't roll the window. Don't roll the window. Yeah. Yeah. And have a nice spot. Have a good day. So, I point out number 10 here simply because this is the next step. Um, what they may try and do is uh, escalate the traffic stop. And this is something that Eddie Craig talks about as well. And there's a lot of thing. a lot of times people don't know how to deal with it. Because if you, unless you're ready for it and know that it's coming, you, uh, uh, um, okay, <laughs> at that point you're screwed. Everything that you did beforehand just went straight out of that window. A lot of the police forces have been militarized too. Yeah, yeah of course they have. Yeah. yeah, I mean all their uniform is right. all full military now. That's the difference between when I was a cop, when I had a frigging truncheon and a set of handcuffs, right. to now the kitted out in full stab and bulletproof vests, oh, yeah. you know, right. stable yeah, buttons, right. pepper spray, and, and that's in the UK. Oh, that's in you really? Know. Yeah. Is and, and even their banner, their car, went from blue to black. Almost yeah. all their cars are almost completely black or black and white. Yeah. Connecticut, no, no, no blue. Yeah, Connecticut are mostly unmarked cars today. And 
and uh, yeah, well, they do it in New Jersey now, where I've seen them that they it's like smoked. So yeah. they have the emblem yeah. on the car, but yeah, it's smoked. It. It's yeah. translucent. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you can I'm barely see it. Other states too. The, the black it. cars. Yeah. It, it's a it's a it's a black automotive color, and w w it police isn't flat black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't even yeah, see it. it, it it's well. very subdued. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can tell a lot of them. You can tell unless they're going for the the, the true um, plain vehicles. But most of those you can see because they, they usually have the big bull bars at the front. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they go in crashing. Yeah. And a lot of them are SUVs. Yeah. Almost all of them now are SUVs. Mm. So this one I, I, I put in and I uh, highlighted it because this is one of the things they'll do. They'll, st they'll talk about um, you interfering with the police investigation, blah, blah, blah. Um, I have no intention to interfere with any law enforcement activity or objective and I have no intention to become belligerent or agitated, or to cause any difficulty or hindrance to your authorized and legally compliant law enforcement activity. Legally. Legally. Right. Operative words. I am not in process, uh, protest or opposition against your office, your profession, or any of your lawful actions. I am in protest only of your violations of my rights, if there are any, and any of your misconduct, if there is any. I actually, I think in further... I'm not sure if it was one of the, the amendments to this. I wrote in it that I am a retired p peace officer. Did you? Yeah. I'm not sure whether it was in here further on, but I did write it in certainly one of the drafts that I had. So that helps me a little bit because right. unfortunately the job protects the job. You know, whether yeah. you're serving or a retired police officer, they have some form professional of respect. Yeah, professional respect. So in a lot of ways, that can help me just that very line on its own. Um, sometimes they don't care. They really don't. So, um, in essence, I, I, I'm basically just giving them bullet points to what we said before, and then we go into the references and citations of what everything is, the right to travel. Um, so, I mean, there's many pages. So, we're actually up to page six. So, it's and not that far. And the balance of that is... Case law and, and yeah, uh, yeah, if I just scroll through it, um, right. we'll look at the headings. Yeah, that's great. Because um, there's lots of citations, sure. um, general ones. Okay, uh, I'm a member of the public and I believe I have this right. And then it goes into different locations where it explains what right. a highway actually is. Yeah, that's great. So it doesn't really matter which state you're in, there's, there's a reference to a street or a highway and what its definition is. Yeah, so I do remind well, in this one, it's actually just what defines what a highway is. Um, because you're saying, I have the right to travel on any public highway. So, they, well, well what, what is a public highway? There's a description, so you're telling them that. Yeah. So here's the U.S. Supreme Court dis um, decision. And this is the one that they go to next as well. Uh, claim and excise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. So they then say... Um, you, you're not providing your name, you're not providing your address, you're not providing your ID. That's a crime. Well, no, it's a right. And you cannot turn it into a crime because that there says that you can't. It's confirmed law. And if you try and do that, um, which one is it? Is it a Title 18? Yeah. 18 U.S. That's violating your rights under Title 18. Oh, that's right, exactly. Um, in fact, it probably says it on here. The facts of court cases, Supreme That's Court cases, refer to 241 is conspiracy. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, again, we scroll through other courts that have confirmed the rights of a citizen to travel upon the highway. That's well put together. Mm -hmm. So it gives them all the information that that they could want. That says, um, I better think about this. <laughs> all right. I'll just get somebody else later on that has no problem of handing over the driving license. And now you've kind of detained him if he sits there and reads all that mess. <laughs> well, I mean, he probably suspicion. won't. But I, I mean, I've seen some of the recent videos where they've sat there 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was one time. So they've been reading hour. it, and I think also they've been on the radio talking to right. a supervisor right. somewhere right. saying, What the hell do I do? I was right. over an hour, and this cop was very nice, had a big, huge bully back up. He was really nice the whole time I was there, over an hour. Hot August day on mm -hmm. the way to Canada, and we were there for about, over an hour. And eventually I had to show my ID. 
He didn't care what it was. Yeah. But I showed him my ID. They want to know the name so they can yeah, do well, a Well, I did give him the name. I said, all I have to do is give you my name. I did. And he went on and on. Then uh, he wanted to know the date of birth. I said, uh, you know, I was very little. I don't know what it is, what it is whatever. All this time. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, they had to get my date of birth, right? And there wasn't enough. They, they tried doing whatever they were doing. They couldn't find and I have a very unusual name, so it's not like there's a hundred of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm in trouble because yeah. mine's Carl Jones. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eventually, I showed them uh, an expired uh, construction uh, uh, license or something. Yeah. And uh, and they took that. Give me a ticket. You're on your way. But that's it. They. they you gave them what they wanted. They gave you a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. So. But it took them over an hour. Yeah, and it was all pointing. My, my wife and the little daughter was with me and a friend of mine, and we were on the yeah, side of the road. Yeah, we had yeah. no water. Yeah. It got to the point that we're like, we're never going to get out of here. Yeah. You know, they're not escalating. It. We're not. So I ended up giving them an ID. But the cop was very, very nice. Yeah. The first they are until they get what they want, or they can escalate business. it further. Yeah. First, first well, cop I ever asked, you want to do business. First cop I ever asked what form of government we have, and he said, Republic. Then why are you bothering me? Yeah, no shit, right? Uh, <laughs> still got a job to do, he said. Uh, yeah. And that should be so, good. anyway, the, uh, this little bit here was uh, another part of, towards the end. It's uh, government public servants, officers, judges are not immune from suit. No. And this goes into explaining exactly why and how they're not immune from, from suit. So they can be sued. I have to use that so after $20,000 to buy a judge. Ignorance of the law does not excuse misconduct in any... Uh, sorry, in any one, least of all in a sworn officer of the law. All are presumed to know the law. Ignorance of the law applies to them, not us. In the exactly, large, that's what we're talking about. In the large Take. letters, lawyers, oh, lawyers. misspelled. Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> should be attorneys. Thank you. Should be attorneys anyway. No, some, it's still lawyers. Some lawyers are not attorneys. Just the liars. And, uh, and so they're not part of the system. <laughs> because yeah. you can be an attorney and not a member of the bar. You can execute uh, power of attorney to anyone, okay? Correct. Okay. Well, okay. So that's at page 20 as far as okay. that particular document uh, goes. The problem with, with bar card attorney is they practice a torment, which is the reversion of your rights to another. Correct. It's a torment. Now this, this is the Eddie Craig, um, he calls it a script of how to deal. So this is all verbal that he's going on here. So. He's not talking about what I did by creating this notice. He's asking them questions. Everything is being recorded. But it just, it's a confrontation. Yeah, you're better off in writing and giving notice that's it. Exactly. And this, is, this is all, is possibly, and especially the way Eddie Craig does this in video, he's, he's being belligerent about it. He's sometimes being a bit of an ass about it. Curtis Collinbeck has got a pretty good uh, thing that, that he uses and you get a plate from him and everything, and it's registered, and it's actually registered with the FBI, and right on top, it says to the cop, if you stop somebody, you're in violation of copyright, call the FBI at his number. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the bit that we got to. Um, this is another section where the cop is not really getting his way with you. He wants to, but he's not getting his way with you. So he's going to try and escalate it. So at this point, uh, is this you or the other gentleman? Is this still the original? I missed Eddie I Craig. Right. No, this Eddie is Eddie Craig. Craig. Okay, um, but I mean, this is part of the process of being a traveler, uh, or even operating as a sovereign. You could have a registered. You could be sitting in a registered vehicle, but you you don't have a license. You don't have insurance. You don't have whatever. Um, but they they're not going to get that information. That's the whole point. So they're going to try and escalate. So um, what they do, let's see if, uh, okay, if the officer then tries to get you out of the car with false allegations, such as saying he smells marijuana or um, I smell alcohol, get out of the car, get out of the vehicle, whatever they say, because that's when, that's, that's the escalation. Or, you know, I see something in there, I want to search your car, get out. And then they get a bit more belligerent about the whole thing. Now, this only works if you haven't been smoking spliffs for the last ten miles, <laughs> or, yeah. or you haven't, you know, gone halfway through a bottle of scotch. Um, 
if he actually does smell that stuff, then you're in trouble anyway. Because uh, that's a different set of laws. <laughs> but, uh, in this case, what he's saying here is, I mean, he's already quoting the name and badge number for the recordings, but your statement is patently false and an outright lie. Are you now trying to fabricate probable cause by making false statements into the record and false allegations against me? Now, in my version of that, I say in, F in an effort to escalate this traffic stop. So then you know, it, it, you're explaining exactly <coughs> the reason he's doing this. <coughs> so that's the little bit that I liked about Eddie Craig's stuff, because it, they do this. They will escalate it. And I've been next to guys when I'm on duty who've done the same thing. Um, so you have to be ready for that. And the very fact that you say that, like that, as soon as he makes that allegation, and you say that officer is patently false and you know it, and then you carry on with the rest of it. An alternative response, due to your falsified statement pursuant to... Uh, I wouldn't even go back. But it's... It's revealing that you know a little bit about the law, but again, unfortunately, this is something that you have to have in your mind. You can't sit there reading it off a card or reading it. You have to remember that. Right. You probably would remember some of it. You might be doing some of it. But yeah. and there are other people that will. I used to remember <laughs> stuff like that. What ten years ago, I could quote stuff quite easily. Don't do it anymore. Now I'm. I know the cases, but you know. I have to be prompted and reminded what they are, and somebody pops up with a name, yeah, that's it. You know. mm -hmm. you recognize it. I recognize it. Yeah. So that's something that you will get to. Now, you're calling them on what it is that they're trying to do at this point. So they will either continue with their bullshit allegations, or they'll say, oops, <laughs> and they'll back away. Um, now, it, during the video, um, Apparently there was a woman that got stopped who was part of his little group and she was on the phone with him while this was going on. They made this allegation, I think about alcohol, and he told her to say that. And the cop went, um, excuse me a moment madam, and went away. Because there was other cops nearby and then they had a bit of a discussion. Um, I forget the actual end result of that, but it didn't escalate because she said that. Well, he she stopped said, Oops, that didn't work. Now what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In essence, that's exactly what they would be doing. So, the whole point about the rights to travel, yes, we have the rights to travel. They believe they have the authority to manage any car that they see on the road. Mm -hmm. They're told that they can do that. Mm -hmm. And they never question it. I actually questioned a lot of stuff in, in the training because this particular phrase here, Private conveyance, not for hire or reward, came from the legislation in England. Oh, did it? Written right into the damn legislation. Yeah. Right. Oh. And, and actually, it is in, in most other states here as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's worded it's differently. Yeah. It's worded differently. But in essence, that shortened phrase there is everything that they need to know. And, and if you want to put that on your vehicle, they should, I mean, if they pull up because you're speeding, they come up behind you, they should see that and say, ah, oh, shit turn off they and go. <laughs> they should. The guy's going down the road and he's, he's speeding. The cop pulls up behind him and uh, the cop turns on the lights. The guy speeds up more, right? So he's going 80 now. The cop's, you know, going down, he's hauling down the road. And the guy's speeding up more. Anyway, he pulled over and uh, the cop comes up. What, what are you doing? He's, you, you know, you know, you're going too fast. He's well. My wife ran away with a cop and told you I'm bringing her back. But I've had, I've had a, uh, a cop uh, pull me over, and then he must have realized something or whatever, or maybe he did get a call. And uh, he goes, you're in luck today, I just got another call. <laughs> and that's possible too, yeah, you know. Because I've, I've had the same thing, right in the middle of a traffic stop. I got an emergency call. You're a lucky day. Off I go. So in that definition so. for highways, it's pretty much any public uh, road, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Any public road or throughway. Um, so as far as dealing with this, I have another document that I wanted to show you guys as well. Um, oh, the false arrest. Uh, I did find something in reference to that. on 
2011. Yeah. False so there's a bit there too, but false imprisonment is the unlawful restraint of an individual's personal liberty or freedom of locomotion. The good faith of the actor is no justification, nor is the want of probable cause an essential element, as in the case of a malicious prosecution. In cases of false imprisonment, the only essential elements of the action are detention and its unlawfulness. So at the moment that it's an unlawful... Let me just move that up a bit, Mike. Carl, can you go down to footnote 12 so I can write down the court case? You're going to be getting that. I am? Yeah, you oh, had, you've got it on your thumb drive already. Okay. I already copied it across. Right, thank you. So you have this. Oh, yeah, can I get it emailed or whatever? Mm. Yeah, any of this stuff will, uh, will be made available to those that don't have it. Okay. Um, so, that basically um, talks about false arrest and what it actually is. And the fact that they have to prove, once you make that allegation, because it's talked about, but I don't think there was anything brought up, Glenn, in, in the stuff that you had that gave you citations about, no. was that really true? Yeah, it was mentioned. Citations, There's it's true. I've got some citations. In another presentation, I could bring them up, but um, let's say that when false arrest, the presumption is that the arrest was illegal and the burden's on them to prove that it was a valid, lawful arrest. Correct. And, and you have to make that allegation and then they have to go and prove it. And this right. proves Glenn. the point. This proves the point. Is it reasonable that the moment the stop is unlawful that we could file a criminal complaint, in your view? Well, Because yeah. it's false arrest, false imprisonment, yeah. we file a criminal complaint, that might get them off of us, right? Well, but the criminal complaint is always after. After, no, I'm saying after they did it. Right. Like the moment they they don't have probable cause, are they guilty of? The well, put it put it, it another way. Anyways. Yeah, Nelson, put it this way: if I'm a cop doing my job, and I pull you over, and you go through all of this, and I say at the end of it, um, yeah, I appreciate that you're. Um, you're uh, reserving your rights and invoking your rights to travel. Um, have a nice day, sir. I don't need this. You can have it. Catch you next time or whatever. And off he goes. If he was nice about the whole thing, why would you then issue a criminal complaint no, against him? I'm not him? saying I would. I'm no, just I'm just saying. saying is, in real world, is he actually guilty? Forgetting his, yes. his behavior. Yes, so the, the very moment he switched his lights on and pulled you over, it's question. a false There's arrest. So we could file a criminal complaint the minute that happens in your in your uh, world. Well, you're filing the complaint of everything else he does after that. I agree, but the minimal one is that the, he, he there's a criminal complaint from the moment. Anything, anything you do is allegations. Right. I'm going to also... criminal complaint is allegations. Right. right. I'm also going to be the devil's advocate. There are a, approximately six to 800 new rules established in this country every day. No one can possibly know all of them. All the laws. Yeah. So you have to give, each person has to give the other, each man has to give the other man an opportunity a remedy to do the right Thank you. And this is the remedy. The, okay. This whole document is remedy right. for him right. and you. Right. I Look, I'm in a position to take Honor. your shirt. <coughs> I'm, di I'm giving you this information to help you. I put that right in the, the first paragraph, second paragraph of the first page. And then repeat out. it. Give him the way out. And then you, then you go into the criminal complaint okay, stuff. That's you. the whole point. Thank you. This is how, this is, we, we are honorable people. We act in honor. If they don't act in honor, then we nail them for it. Right. That's the point. That's what right. we're supposed to be doing. I think Boris put it very clearly yesterday, and you're reaffirming Boris's position. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. all we, we're we all honor. If we claim to be Christians, we're supposed to be very honorable. Yes. And forgiveness um, is allowing people to make mistakes and allowing people to fix them. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that always used to frustrate me when I was a cop, um, because I felt at that point with the training, I I was always I'm always an honorable person. I'm always a truthful, trustworthy, honorable, blah blah. So when I was in the police acting as a constable, I acted as a constable. Um, and I'll tell you just a quick, quick story. This is this what got me into a lot of trouble. But uh, within the first couple of years of me being in the job, you're in two years of probation. So a set of nights I'm out with a sergeant who basically got transferred from another division for trying to hang somebody. Literally? Literally. 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 
Um, I won't go into the details, but the guy was a nut job. So he was transferred and he became my um, sergeant. Ooh, lucky you. No, well, yeah, not mine specifically, <laughs> but there was a group. And one set of nights, he takes out the probationer and goes through the paces with them all. And they look for stuff to people to arrest, things to do. Um, and typically he would always come back with an arrest because he would always find a drunk. And the drunk would be arrested, whether he did anything wrong or not. Yeah. Um, and one night he took me out to do the same thing. Uh, so there's one particular night, uh, literally just around, I mean, what, a thousand feet from where the station was. And there's a pub, drinking pub. Um, Well-known Irish bar. All the Irish used to go in there. And they would, uh, Friday night, and they would drink. And this particular guy we saw walking up the road... Well, not really walking, he was staggering. Uh, but he was using the railings. Sea legs. <laughs> exactly. And he was so drunk that he had no clue what the hell was going on. Uh, and he just wanted to get home, which, as we, we pulled over and as we found out, was just around the corner. I mean, two, three hundred feet around right. the corner. He was right. lived that close yeah. to the, the pub. So what he bought the, there. <laughs> the guy wasn't doing anything wrong. He just wanted to get home. Yeah. He'd just left the pub. It just closed. He wanted to get home. The sergeant um, pretty much just coaxed him, pro uh, provoked him, yeah. poking him in the chest at the same time he was standing on his foot. So, he, I mean, the guy yeah, was right. trying to balance. Right. Cause he was that drunk he couldn't stand up straight. Right. And like, he got one foot, you know, was being held, being held and he, he, he only had... Need. And then he was being poked. So, of course, the drunk said, get off me, kind of thing. Sergeant turned around to me and said, okay, arrest him. Drunk and disorderly. And I said, no. Oh, okay. I said, I'm not arresting him. The guy just wants to get home. I'm not arresting him. He's not done anything wrong. So, he was lucky, in essence, because he got let off. Yeah. He let him walk, but I got right in the shit for that. I'll bet you did. For, for months and months, I was the dog's dinner after oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I stood up, I was honourable, and I stood up and I, I said, he not done anything wrong. Yeah. And I did that many times, many times. Even to the extent where you're going into um, shoplifting cases, you get people who are caught for shoplifting. And I would, I mean, you get the interview, you'd go in, the first thing you'd start to the uh, the security guard, whoever it is who's making the allegation, you listen to what they say, and then you go in and you speak to the guy or the girl or woman, whatever, who was um, being alleged to have, have shoplifted. Right. And usually the, the, the evidence was there, they'd done it. It was right there, they'd caught them sure. stealing the stuff. Sure. So there's, the ones that I, I questioned were the ones for food. If somebody's going into a store and stealing, uh, you know, jeans or yeah. nice shirt or shoes or whatever, that's something. That's just that's a want. Right. Food is a need. Yeah. So if I'm going into a place where somebody's the legend that they've stolen food, then I want to question this person and say, why are you stealing food? Right. Yeah, and probably a greater need there than just. Yeah. Well, this particular one. Um, this one, uh, I, it kind of it got me. Uh, because I was exactly the same age as him, I had the same number of children as him, um, and I could be in this situation, because sure. this was right in the middle of a recession, he'd been laid off work, couldn't find work anywhere, yeah. his, work, uh, his wife sorry, had three young children, she couldn't really work because she was looking after the kids, sure. and they, well, they would get pittance from welfare, and he, he was at his, his last legs, you know, he was desperate. And they had the money to go out and get a little bit of shopping, but it was his wife's birthday. And he wanted to do something special, so he, he paid 30, 32 pounds for the shopping. So he paid for some of the shopping, but then he stole several cans of tuna, tuna fish, and there's something else, there's a couple of other things. Not very much, it came to like four pounds out of the 32 pound bill that he paid, uh, plus the four pounds that he stole. But he stole it because he wanted to give his wife something for yeah. birthday because he had nothing else, even if it was just a meal. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so I said, I hear you. And I did a check on him. The guy's never been in trouble before, wasn't known to us, nothing. Right. So I went back to the security guard and I said, hey, the guy's got the money to pay for the extra. Or 
if you just want to leave it here and let him go with what he's paid. Um, you can uh, ban him from the store, never let him back in the store again. Uh, but look, this is a situation and I think it would be a nice thing to do. The guy said, nope, sign there, we prosecute everybody. Oh, really? So I stuck to it and I had to take the complaint, I had to take this guy down to the station, I had to interview him, he admitted everything and the reason why. Um, and all the time I'm thinking, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't a little happen. mercy would have prevailed. Exactly. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, right. I mean, because now that guy's got a criminal record. Oh, absolutely. For yeah. theft. But, like, see, in this country I can o offer a promise to pay and never come back to pay it. But if I walk out of the store with the stuff, uh, they yeah, call me. Yeah, really. Right. Yeah. That's well, how it works. It's the highly sophisticated method of theft. Anyway. Well, it's the same in the UK, yeah. anyway. Sure. The, the, the notes are all the same. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, fortunately, I was able to go to the inspector and say, look, can we can we do a caution for this guy, which means he doesn't go through the, the main court system and right. be convicted yeah. of theft. But caution basically means I admit what I did, you get a telling off by the inspector and out the door. It shows on your record. Oh, it does. But, it, yeah, but it shows as a, as a minimum no. thing. What he should have done is gone to uh, either tell the, tel uh, the register operator there, hey, I have all this stuff, I don't have enough money, is there any way I can talk to the manager so they can give it to me? But just taking it is, is, is a problem. Yeah, they won't do it though, of course. People just think, no, well, they, they if I can get away with it, then we'll do that. But no, the, the stores give away donations all the time. They do, but in that, I mean, it was recession, it was it was in the middle of a, a kind of, it was one of the worst areas in the, the whole of the division where I work. In fact, the whole part of the country where I work was one of the worst divisions. Where were you? I was in, uh, in that particular case, I was in an area called Cheatham Hill in Manchester, just north of Manchester. It's about two miles north of Manchester. But it literally was, it used to be an old Jewish area. There were still Jewish people there, but the majority of them now were the down and outs. Okay. The Jewish had cleared out, they cleared it of whatever they needed of it. Uh, done nothing to the houses, and then it was all, everybody else moved in. So, you know, it was, it was the poor. It was literally the poor. Of, 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 I mean, it wasn't, you know, um, it wasn't blacks or, or Asians or it was every. I mean, Irish were there, the, the poor English. It was, a melting pot. It was just a melting pot um, of, yeah. of poor people. Um, so it, it wasn't a good situation to Where be in on. Where's Manchester? Because Northwest I England. Northwest. Yeah. If you um, uh, yeah, if you picture England yeah. and there's that Wales that sticks out. Right, right. It's right and there. just where Wales comes into the rest of England, there's a little portion there. I, I was there. I ended up in that town for some reason. I can't remember. It's on the coast. Manchester's the seaport. It's no, no. Liverpool's the seaport. Liverpool's the other one. Yeah, they are well, 32 miles apart. Yeah, right. Is Titanic from there? No, Portsmouth. 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 That was on the, the southern leg of England. So, Question on ID. Uh, yes. Somewhat related. When we get these IDs, do they not have our surnames on them? Is that one of the things? They have one of what you want to put on. So they can't find us. Um, if we don't there's have a date of birth. There's a guy in Arizona that just put his first name. His first name was Salvatore, and he just put Sal. And that's all that's on there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they usually want yep. first name and last name because that's how that's the only way they can search in their. Uh, oh, you mean the, the, the police? The yeah. Cars. Yeah. You're, you're, they want your uh, father's. Clan's name, right? But we don't. Yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. If they call it the last name, surname. I can show you mine, and I can tell you that that uh, with NSEA, it's whatever you decide to put on. Okay. Yeah, because uh, like I said, so with NSEA, the address you're talking about. That's, what that's, that's my question. That's my question. That that you can put a different address. place like where you're from. We're talking about the name. Yeah, right. that's and good. then they do that's the good. Julian born date too. It's like 13 days prior to your birthday. So if they ask for the birth date, it's on there. But when they run it, it doesn't show well, anything connected to your match. actual name. Nice. Right. Well, actually, you. actually, it's on. On they usually do it 10 days after. Your birth. Julian born. Well, however, whatever NSCA does it 13 days prior. Oh, NSCA. NSCA does it 13 days prior. That's what they call it, Julian born day. Anyways. So. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to bring this one to your attention, guys. It's a public servants questionnaire. It's up to you whether you use this or not. Um, I think with the other uh, notice that I, I have suggested you give to these these cops, mm -hmm. you wouldn't necessarily use this. But it literally is a questionnaire that they fill out, uh, asking um, you know, who they are, supervisor's name, 
Do um, so you, you include that in your, your document there? Um, I don't know. No, no. I, this I would I would do separately. But the chances are you're going to give it to them and they'll give it you back. They're not going to fill it. They're in. Not gonna fill it in. They'll, they'll never fill it in. But it, it's just you know it's expected results of the investigation. Yeah, I'll, I took I'll give you a like ticket. that and modified it, and it, it's a one-page document that yeah. I've used at real estate closings and, and other places. It says agents questionnaire. Yeah. Because if I'm if I'm a real estate closing, I'm dealing with the principal. Mm -hmm. The attorney's an agent. And I want him to divulge his contractual relationship with the principal. If yeah. it's verbal or, or contractual, I want to see the contract. I want to see, you know, insurance, you know, the limits. If he's working for a corporation, I want that information. And at the bottom, right at the very bottom, for attorneys only, have you divulged to your, con to your client, seven corpus juris secundum, that as an officer of the court, your responsibility is to the court, the public, and not your client. Yeah. They never tell you that. No, no. Otherwise, don't. you never pay a fee. <laughs> and exactly. they get all red in the face and say, I'm not going to sign that. Well, great. Well, my client's not going to sign that, that, and that. they got to sign this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, with this one... Um, That's why you're not in real estate anymore. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't have a license, but I can... You still have a lot of clothes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this particular... Th I, the form itself is, is just something else you could use. They would never they would never fill it in. Um, no. And the, the point really is just to become a bit of a block for them. It's something else that they have uh, they have to do. Uh, and it's do I really need this, or should I just wait for another ten minutes and pull somebody else? Over? <laughs> yeah, <you're right. laughs> you know, this is what it's all about. But the the point is that we have the right. We should treat them with a certain modicum of respect and defend ourselves, defend our rights, and defend our position. Give them the information and see where it develops from there. If he comes back to the car, and I've seen the videos now, and, and maybe look, these people are sitting there 25 minutes, to 40 minutes, 45 minutes, but the cop comes back, hands the stuff over to them and says, you seem to know what you're doing, just be safe, have a nice day, and walks away. Or oh, just ran and say, see you later. Well, Six I've days. seen some. Yeah. I've seen some of them where the cops are just like, <coughs> guns are <coughs> really mad, you know, because the guy is is asserting his rights. Unfortunately, I've seen some of them where they've been asserting their rights a little too Aggressive. aggressively, and yeah. you shouldn't do that, you know. You're gonna get yourself shot. Yeah. Well, today you've got uh, yeah. more laws coming forward on bullying too. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean. They, they're in a position of authority, and they are, I forget authority what Mark Stevens... Authority their subjects, but not, you know, if they assert their yeah, authority they, wrongly... Yeah, but that's it, we have to train them, we have to Presumably inform them that they like don't sense. have authority over everybody. They and presume. that's the problem, because their training says they do have authority. If you're in a vehicle on the road, they have a right to stop you if you do something wrong and demand your documents. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why you use this is to get to a point where they've seen it a few times, and by the yeah. time the next one comes and says, hey, oh, another one, see you later. See you later, yeah. Which is That's another reason one. why you put something like this up in the windshield. Uh, not the windshield, the, the, the back. back yeah. Because if they're going to drive up behind you, they're going to see this, and at that point, hopefully, they'll know what it means. And they'll just say, uh, okay, next. And <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the daily briefings that they get, they'll be told about stuff like this. Right. Well, Especially well, if, one of them, if, one, if one of them got hit, you know, where he was had to pay or whatever, then they'll say, hey, be careful of this, you know, if you see something like this, well, this can help. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll go back to something else quickly as well, but um, uh, again, my buddy John Anderton, uh, he had uh, another friend who'd done this. Um, and had put the cop under contract at the side of the road. It was recorded. I'm not sure if he had signed something, but it was certainly recorded. And he put all of that information. You continue with this, and you're going to owe me blah, blah, whatever, $500 an hour. Turned out it was about a bill of about $2,000. It was all dealt with. The guy issued the bill, sent it to him. The guy took it to his supervisor and said, hey, I just got presented with this bill. And the, the supervisor said, well, did you agree to it? Like it said. Well, yeah. Well, bill. 
<laughs> I, I was very close to doing that, but with Colin's teaching, he uh, he says, and I did this throughout the whole process. Um, is that an order? Is that an order? Yep. I'll accept your order. I'm going to be billing you for it. Yep. Just, good. just reminding you, if your order is two hundred fifty dollars, and every time he do an order, mm -hmm. say now you're up to this amount. Now you're up to this amount. And uh, when they wanted to get my fingerprints and all that, I said, uh, you know, I'm not going to do that. And they tried to get my picture, and I go like this. <laughs> they brought me to the to the jail overnight, and they tried to do my uh, take my do my intake, you know, fingerprints and all that. And there, I didn't do it either. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, I, I signed. I refuse, and, and uh, I refuse. And no, never, no, never I refuse. refuse. It, no, it's a controversy. You never refuse. Do you know I do, yeah, I, yeah. I said, uh, under uh, I think I put under duress without prejudice. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I think that's what I put on everything when I was, I was taken there. And so they, and I said, I don't give you permission. They wanted me to sign. I don't give you permission to take my um, DNA. Yeah. They, even, they even wanted to give me a tuberculosis shot no. to spend the night in jail. <laughs> and I said, no why would I allow you to do that? Oh, everybody does it. I said, well, you're not my doctor. Uh, you know, I don't know who you are. We don't have a, a confidentiality agreement or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so then she starts asking me questions, and I just kept saying the same thing. I don't have a, an agreement with you. You're not my doctor. I'm not going to divulge anything. Well, this is it. We're, we're stand we're all of these situations, we're standing up for our rights, and we have to maintain our our um, self governance, our right to self determination, our right to say no right. and not contract with these people, whoever it is. I mean, we're talking about cops in this instance, but it could be anything, anybody. It could be, you know, going down to your doctors. Uh, you do a vaccine shot. No. It's mandatory. No, it's not. You tell me where it says it's mandatory. Why are we answering that question? I'm just going in, in okay. the general, okay. it's not okay. about this specifically, just maintaining our self-determination and self-governance, yeah. you know, and stop agreeing with these people. Right. Stop just allowing them to do what they do. Stand up and say no. Right. No is, can be construed as, as a controversy. Right. So the other way, um, you'll look, you can find this on the internet all over, is um, to, you consent with reservations. Acceptance. Conditional acceptance. Thank you. There's that brain again going. Yeah, um, my wife would, whenever the, he wanted to give our kids shots, she'd say, "No problem. You can give them shots as long as you provide me with a letter that you accept all liability for any negative reactions that may happen." And all of a sudden, they'd come out with a form to fill out that said, "You, you refused, and you don't sign that either, because well, it's a refusal." Would, yeah. <laughs> So that, that puts you in controversy again. Yeah. Uh, and what they say is that you are putting the child in danger by refusing. And you sign to say that you're doing that. Because that's what that form says. It's right. not a child, it's so my property. Yeah, it's I'm not your property sorry. either, because you gave over registration to the government. <laughs> that's right. So that's... Registration of what? Conditional... The child. Of the name. Of the child. Name. Yeah, they, they will say the child. I know what they'll say. Yeah. What's the difference I do not consent or I refuse? No, never say refuse, because a refusal is controversy. You're, you're out, outright, outright saying no, and which is creating a controversy. Or what you say with a conditional acceptance is that, okay, I agree that I will do that if you can prove, preferably in writing, that you have the authority to compel me to, compel me to do that. <coughs> Otherwise, I'm sorry. Her, her I question, I think, is also... We can be apologetic about it, but the thing is, it's a conditional can acceptance. Conditional so you're going to do it in writing, there's different ways of doing it. But any way verbally, um, and the other one that um, uh, Vitaly mentioned there was um, the command, Carl Lentz. Is that a command? Order, order. Uh, sorry, order. order. Here we say order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you're saying, order is that an order? Because it's a bit like a restaurant. They always go back to the, the analogy of the restaurant. Yeah. You go into a restaurant and you order something and they bring it to you and they won't pay you. They completed your order, you got to pay. Yeah. yeah, and it's the same thing. And you say to them, is that an order? Because when, when I complete that order, then, or you complete that order, whichever way around you, you want to do, 
um, when that order is completed, then I'm going to ex accept payment. So do you agree to that? Preferably have the cameras running. More of them, you know, if you've got your cell phone, have that going. If you've got a, a voice recorder, have that going. Anything and everything that's got it recorded. Because that's all evidence. Carl, do you have I do not consent anywhere in your information? Because that's what we're being basically told at times yeah. to do. I do not consent. I have a little piece of I do not consent. Which that? I don't think I have do anything in there that... Do you ever use, quote, I do not consent? Um, I have put it, actually, I have put it in there um, with regards to the reservation of rights. So I'm reserving my rights, and part of that is that I do not consent to I be compelled and so on. I do not consent to searches and seizures as usually one that's... Yeah. So we've seen people just saying, I do not consent, I do not consent. It is good. It's okay. To what? <laughs> Anything. Yeah. It's still an assertion of your right. So it's an assertion of your right, yeah. It's, it's not saying that <coughs> it's it's not being outright uh, belligerent and, and being... Um, just giving your notice. Yeah, you're just giving the notice that I, I, I don't want this to happen. I am not giving you permission to do this. Mm -hmm. If you do this, you're forcing it on me. So, um, so it's implied if we stop there, but it would be helpful to verbalize or in writing tell them what we're not consenting to. Yeah, which is why, again, that notice, that notice it, it pretty much has all, all that stuff in there. It's and they can the ask the questions. And you, you don't want to establish joinder. When you establish joinder, now you're stuck like blue. Well, you see, people think when they say contracts. Well, that's people think don't. Exactly. But the thing is, people think, seem to think, well, it's not a contract. I didn't sit down with a lawyer, and I didn't write this, this, and this, and sign it. That's, I didn't do that. Adhesion. That's, no, it's not it's even a that. Verbal it's a verbal. Right. Uh, or even the fact um, it, it's, um, it's a verbal process. It's a verbal contract. Right. Well, it's no, it's not even implied. Right. If I say to you, uh, you move over there, and you do it, contract fulfilled. Yeah. Right, right. Well, the judge, in, in my case, you know, like my, uh, my suit against the bank, just tried to get me into a verbal contract. Yeah, and they do it all the time. All the time. Yeah. And, and then in fact, the I'll, I'm not sure. It was brought up on the Ascentio Mentio shows that we did. Um, John Anderson remembers somebody who used to do this in court. Um, and he was beating them left, right, and center. This guy was walking all over them. And there was one particular court case, got right to the end of it again, and he was, w he was winning. Winning. And... He was leaving, and the judge turns around to him and take that toothpick out of your mouth. Yeah, I haven't Takes yeah, the toothpick. Right. Bailiff! Yeah. Oh, boy. He done it. He, he, he just, he, he, he followed the order. He gave him jurisdiction, he gave him the authority. Or even take a seat. Yeah. Take a seat. Or stand up. <laughs> Anything like that. You, you, you're following the orders. Even if it's the bailiff that said it, it's the orders of the court. So, anything that you do involving this, you have to be careful. You really do, because the, the words, the words, 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 words are dangerous. Words, words are dangerous, we which might is why. Word is a word that is a word that we're used to using because we we speak to each other. But words to them is a legal word. It's it's right. Right. And they really want to study that. Look there. Look yeah. at the word supper. Yeah. Supper you is put up with. Right. Supper is your consent to the abuse you're mm -hmm. putting up with because you didn't fight back. So, yeah, yeah it's dangerous. Them. You know, it's against the law means, book. It means not tell them, so tell, don't tell the Gentiles. Is there anything that anybody wanted to ask just before? Cause you know, this can go on for a long time. With I know stuff. it's against the law book. I said we had a break for... I have the declaration yeah. of non-consent. You break, I mean. You got a declaration? You have it written? I can send it to you right now. Hey, Carl. Uh, I'm not sure I can pull it up on that. Right. It says like declaration of non-consent. I do not consent... Well, this could list whatever you want to declare, just so you know. But this particular one, it says, I do not consent to false flag events. I do not consent to terror tactics by government agencies. I do not consent to violence used against myself or my family. I do not consent to an invasion of my privacy. I do not consent to interface with my interference with my freedom. I do not consent to any person, agency, corporation, group, or entity representing myself in any way, shape, or form I do not consent to the, tr to the theft of my corporations, 
I do not consent to anything or anyone who links myself in any way. I do not consent. Well, that could be used in the um, notice notices, because that's that's your cons your uh, definitions of what you don't consent to. Can that that can be all part of that your notice. Um, so sorry, did somebody? You know, it's against the law for a cop to sweat. I didn't know that. Because you don't know what sweat means. Uh -huh. Sweat is when they're interrogating a suspect or something Sweating like that. Sweating a witness. And they're making him sweat. The other thing is perspire, <laughs> not sweat. Yeah. Yeah, it was never never something to come up back in the UK, so. <laughs> now, so. English was created as a language to control. Yeah, it's a, it's well, a language of deception. English. Well, it's English, you're right. In my, in my research identified that the word language came from Langridge. which was a bolo shot of the ship for the purpose of piracy. <laughs> the bolo wrapped around the mast, stopping the vessel from going so it could be piratized. And you're right, that's exactly what our language does. The legalese is the language that really does all that. Legalese is a different language. <coughs> yeah, it's a completely different language. It's not English. What we what we generally speak with each other is language uh, is English right. language. But even that, uh, multiple words have multiple meanings. Correct. You know, they so have a lot of languages. Yeah, I guess they do. But legalese is very definitely um, a language to be to the be careful of. The so construction of languages. This is goes back to where we were supposed to say, "My word is my bond." Yep. That was it. Well, that's an agreement. That's that's the that's the uh, the man's uh, unconditional capacity to contract. And once you contract, see, this is part of the golden rules. The golden rules are do no harm, um, uh, do no harm, create no damage or loss, and um, be honourable in your contracts. Yeah. Those are basically the three, the three laws, mm -hmm. immutable laws that we should be adhering to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, no, cause no harm, so you don't assault anybody. No damage or loss, so don't damage somebody's property and don't steal it. Yeah. And be honourable in your contracts, yeah. your agreements, and that's even your word. Every contract that I've ever had, any private contract that I've had with any of my clients, my customers, has been on a handshake. Except one. One wanted things written down. Because they were, actually you might know them, Helicopter Transport Services out of uh, what? Canada. Helicopter Transport Services. I've never heard of them. Oh, okay. They're, they're pretty big. They, they have they several places. In? Their main office is outside Ottawa, CARP in Ottawa, oh, that's in, why in I Ontario. Yeah. But they have they have offices in Baltimore. Um, they have two in um, Oregon. Um, and they're down in South America too. So. Well, that'd be a great world if you could find a bunch of people like that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, but that, I mean, the, uh, most of the, the clients that I have, they'll shake and say, look, this is my bond. This is what I will agree to do to you, for right. you. Uh, you. If you want it in writing, I'll put it in writing. But otherwise, it's a private contract between us. And the shake of my hand is my bond. And it, if it's your bond too, then that's it. We're done. I've done that a lot. And I have. I have most of them. In fact, all my clients are that way. Mm -hmm. The only one that I don't don't really have a contract with because I don't do regular work is a lawyer. Sorry. <laughs> <It's> a lawyer. <laughs> um, yeah. I have contracts with attorneys with a contract. Just remember the town that quite a few the Jews have the right to uh, lie cheat and steal against the uh, Gentiles. Yeah, so Sharia yes. law. Sharia law. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so do police officers. Yeah, yeah they do have the right we to lie, that's part of the questioning. We had a agent and he said his job was to lie. Mm -hmm. Actually, if somebody, I don't know if anybody's seen this, but look up a uh, YouTube video. It's by a law professor from Harvard, I think. Uh, and it's titled, Never Talk to Police. Yep, I remember oh, yeah. it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant, uh, it's about 45 fast. minutes. Yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> really fast. And I was listening to that video at, at uh, one and a quarter speed as well. So <laughs> I had to slow it down to normal speed to understand what he was saying. He wasn't talking fast, he was just listening to slow. <laughs> but anyway, if, if anybody um, hasn't heard that, go find it, go listen to it, because the full video basically has this lawyer giving all the reasons why you should never talk to police, and then they have um, an investigator, police officer, 
I'm sure it's a sergeant or above that, but anyway, it's a police officer who's uh, part of the CID, the investigation division, who comes in. First thing he says is, I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> Don't talk to police. And that's all about reserving your rights, the Fifth Amendment. Everything you, you say will be used against you in a court of law. It won't help you. You, and you cannot explain your way out of something. You will only explain your way into something. And that's why, that's why the, probably the most important thing you can say is uh, uh, I answer no questions and make no statements and just keep repeating it. I answer no questions and make no statements. Yeah. And that amounts to the same thing. You're invoking your Now, when I answer a right. no question with a question, do I still maintain my Miranda's right? You're not answer as soon as you answer a question, your rights just went out the window. Yeah, so how do we sit into a question with a question? She's asking where are you coming from? Question. Are you aware that, do you know I'm stopping uh, you? Well, mm, if it's a direct question like that, and there's only a one answer, or an obvious answer, like, as you just said there, sorry, I do not answer questions. Yeah. If there's something you want to say, by getting a point across, by something he's saying or asking of you, then ask the question of him. Most times... Don't, you don't, uh, don't say anything. Or ask another question. Like, uh, well, it depends, says, because you can ask questions, <coughs> but th they kind of have to be relevant. And if it's not relevant to you, and if you're not cognizant of what it is that you're saying or asking, it's best not to say anything. Right, right. But not I'm at all. I'm saying if they, if they want to know where you're coming from, you could ask them, do you have a business card? And then they say, well, where are you coming, where are you going? See, uh, that's what I'm saying. When they ID. ask you that question and you ask them another question, are you still violating your Miranda's rights? Because they're going to create that conversation anyhow. Yeah, and, and you don't have to say anything. Talent, if you talent, You know what's the worst thing for people? The worst thing for people is to be put in a room with somebody else sat there and not say a thing. It's so uncomfortable. Mm. It's so uncomfortable, yeah, especially, especially in a position of authority. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, the investigators will do. Yeah. They'll have you sat in the room, they'll leave you in there to stew for a few minutes or more, and then they'll come and sit down and then they'll start, you know... Uh, let's check Ready the tape. Or they'll sit there it's it's ten minutes way. before they start the interview. By, By the time that interview starts, you can't get the words out of your mouth fast enough. Yeah. As, a, as a matter of fact, because they put so you they under that. Like yeah, well, we'll they cure, know what will cure doing. you of that is vipassana, right? It's total silence for ten days. Yes. The advance. Yeah. The advance is your days. your own. Um, your own silence. Your own self to be. Just be by yourself for a period of time is the best thing that you can do. It takes right. so much out of you, so much stress. Most people can't and do the that. sound of silence yeah. does not bother you. Right. Noise at that point bothers you. Mm -hmm. Believe as me. A, as a matter of fact, on that video we were talking about, didn't he say he comes in and he brings a recorder in and he presses the button but he's not recording? Yeah. And that makes people be more aware and honest. And and, uh, you know, yeah, well, people, the you know, it's the couching of the questions, too, because they'll ask you questions in a certain way that you're volunteering information. On that particular video, he talks about um, a woman whose house was burgled. And, and he said, look, the woman's really upset, you know. I mean, just, just write her a letter and say, I'm sorry what I did. Confession, and, you know, confession. Freaking confession. <laughs> yeah. And they do it, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. People do it. How do we get a copy of... Uh, um, I have a few different documents, that, uh, the ones that I've mentioned specifically, I've already copied through to a couple of people. Um, I just joined the WhatsApp, but I just need to be added to the group where I can then drop these documents in too. Yeah, can we drop documents in the WhatsApp? I need to be added to the group. Yeah, because, um, I mean, I'll, I'll join anyway, I haven't joined yet, but everybody who's part of it, I can drop that uh, for them. Those, Sharon, you already have them, I know Mike has them too. Um, so, you know, there's a few what different what's people have you email, or does it just give you to your text to your phone? Yeah. yeah. The WhatsApp, I have, I have not used it for a long time. As an IT consultant, I spend less time being involved in all these things than, because I just don't want to be involved with them. I know of them, I can tell you about them, but it doesn't mean to say I'm a member of them, because I know what it's all about. It's, it's just, it's a way to get into your computer system, gain information, and it's not helpful, so. Be a pro you're giving them potential access. 
Yeah, they have backdoor access anyway. I mean, you'll never keep the yeah, NSA and the, oh, the government and people. They are, yeah. They, they, they search. They, they know who's looking at what. Yeah, well, everything's recorded. So unless you go through a VPN that's recorded for another IP address, in which case you protect yourself a little bit, but it doesn't matter. The one thing, the one thing I would I just slipped my mind. Um, I wanted to bring something up there quickly. It came, just snapped in something you were talking about. Um, no, you actually mentioned it, um, and I wanted to mention it, and now it slipped away again. Never mind. Um, you're not old enough to have seen the moment yet. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> While I was driving, because that's what I thought I was doing, I had a license, and the police officer pulled me over, and I w had done something that he could have taken me for. So I put my hands out the window like I was under arrest. He couldn't stop laughing. Is so that I right? I thought that was so hilarious. He had never ah, seen that. Ah, like I'm, I'm ready. under arrest. I'm, ready. I'm under arrest. Ah. He just said, see you later. <laughs> Uh, well, a, a, and a, a good it, driver should bring his own handcuff. And he put it, he put, <laughs> that's a good one. He, so basically I was telling him I'm under arrest. Right. You know, right. And I, but I also felt that, you know, one of the problems is the stress they have. Who knows when they're going to get shot. Oh, so yeah. I was just putting oh, on ease. Because right. sure. I would want somebody to yeah. do that for me right. if I was coming up to their car not knowing you know, mm -hmm. who was in it. I'll tell you, as, as a, uh, a, a previously serving cop, Back in the UK, it's, it's completely different because very rarely did we ever come across guns. But of course, we came across knives and swords and screwdrivers and all sorts of things all the time. Uh, I almost lost an eye because really? of a screwdriver. From screwdriver? Yeah. It was that, fortunately, it was, the, uh, it was the handle end, not the business end. Wow. Otherwise, I would have lost an eye. Um, but I was actually... Uh, <laughs> I came round the back of the house as the burglar was coming out the window. And we met in the middle in the lawn. Um, but as I dived to get him, he saw me coming and had the, the handle, um, the blade, uh, sorry, of the, of the big screwdriver. It was a big, oh friggin' 16-inch, wow. huge thing. He used to jam it. Oh, yeah, Jimmy and all sorts of things open. But anyway, he was holding that so that the whole handle was the baton at the end of it. And anyway, as I was diving, he was running, and then he, he swung it at me. Uh, and I saw it coming, I went... Ah, and it just it hit me, yeah. grazed right. right across wow. my eye. Um, so it was big black bruise. Oh, my wife almost died when she saw it when I came home because it came up pretty quickly. Um, and it was good that he went to court soon after that because the eye was still there. So when the judge saw it, yeah. he got uh, he got twelve three twelve months sentence for what he, what he did. Um, yeah, cons and they weren't consecutive. They were concurrent. Uh, no, con they weren't concurrent. They were, he made no them con consecutive. So he well, got three different charges. Three different charges. They did it for burglary, police assault, uh, and there was something else. I forget what that was. Um, yeah, I thank you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because at that point it was resisting arrest. But I wasn't sure whether you were going to do that as part of the police assault thing, but yeah, it was separate. So there's three charges. He got charged with the burglary, the police assault, and the resisting arrest. Uh, but he got a couple of bruises too because the buddy was coming up behind me, grabbed that off him, and then <laughs> beaten him on the arms and the legs with the, the screwdriver, basically saying, don't ever hit a cop. At this point, I'm yeah. getting... You know, I'm trying to do this with an eye. I can oh, only yeah. see out of one eye. Right. And I'm trying to, get the, trying to get the handcuffs on him. So, anyway, does uh, anybody else well, have any uh, interesting yeah. stuff to yeah. question about there? Or? So, technically, I gave them a conditional um, consent or, or, or acceptance by, uh, by essentially letting them know that I knew that they were in commerce. Yeah, well... That they yeah. were acting in commerce. See, the problem is that what you ended up doing, you gave them consent and you gave them conditional assent, and they just took the consent, the conditional Part of it just went out the window at that point because they, and as far as they were concerned, they got full consent to do whatever they wanted to. Right, but I put a condition on it, and so then they were trying to alter my side of the contract, so we never had a meeting in the mind. Yeah, see, a big problem was the false plate. But it doesn't matter because there's a reason for that false plate. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter. You can have it any. Technically, you want. it shouldn't matter because it still codes. It's still what? It's, it's still, still codes. codes. I'm not. It's still regulations. It's right. not. It's 
it doesn't matter what you put on your car. Yeah, you see, the thing is that you gave, there was evidence of a crime at that point, and they can't overlook that. Right, right. evidence of a, a United States citizen crime. Yes. And they didn't have absolute proof that I wasn't a United States citizen. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was that you they did had, they went said, the you gave it. Yeah, they always go over the right. until the you tell them is, otherwise. The but thing I is, the, the, having the plate and it being expired and all that, that's like they are flagged and, and uh, you, you're acknowledging that you've been in commerce and you, you may have been in commerce at that time, whatever. So that's why when people do this kind of stuff, you should do it in a, in a clean car that was never in your name or anything I have like no that. choice. Bill of sale. I guess I could have put, I could have put private automobile as a license and drift. drift you may have, uh, you may have been more successful if you did just put a homemade plate on yeah. there that said right, private, right. um, you know, private conveyance, not engaged in commerce or right. you know, whatever. All um, indications are, if I, if I were the cops, up and you know, all indications are, you stole the car. I don't care who you are. Well, they check that. They check to see. Yeah, only after they stopped they, you. Right. The right. vehicle, it, I, they, and they realized. They already had probable cause at that point. The right. crime had been committed. They there had was everything no, they needed. No, there was no stolen vehicle report out there, so they couldn't do it. They couldn't claim it was a stolen car. No, but they still took it. Right. Because there were other offenses that were. Uh, and right. In, in other words, they're, they're going on the fact that I didn't have proof. Like, for instance, the five star passport that says, leave me alone, do not detain. You know, don't take my property. That would have been sufficient proof, but I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have. Well, you, you know, your assertion of your rights going back there, reclaiming your property, and that. Right, right. That so I, th I think what he, what, what was offered to me was absolutely wonderful. I go there and make them an offer. I think I, I'm, one, I've, I've gotten, but then I've gotten the escalation point. But right now, all I need to do is go to a dealership and get a. An offer from a dealership to sell me a car for cash or credit card, not a, a loan. Yeah. And be able to give me a uh, an offer. Get that in writing. And well, this is how much it's going to cost for me to replace the vehicle you stole. That's what you want in writing. That's right. What Boris says. What it says. No, I don't know why you're complicating it. Just no, I'm not. Com I'm not complicating it. You start he, and get it. He's, he, no, I, I, I know exactly what Boris has asked me to do. Yeah. I'm going to do that. The only thing I'm going to take is I'm going to take those questions that he asked me, pull them out, put them on a piece of paper, and leave that paper with them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he said about that. Uh, obviously, if he's, what he said, if you, if you pay attention to that and, and yeah. follow that. Yeah. And I'm guessing that will be the, the best course of yeah, action. I'm supposed to leave him a birth certificate, but I'm also going to leave him a question. Well, it's a copy of the birth certificate. Right, a copy, that. and then I'm going to, I was going to leave them the questions, yeah. so they have a copy sure. of the questions, and so we have a witness that says, I showed, not only asked yeah. the questions, but I gave them a copy. Yeah, get it on audio as well. Get the phone going, somebody, somebody recording the whole thing too. Right. Preferably with the dates down as well. See, I mean, that's another thing. When we talk about doing all of this, I mentioned that I have dash cams. I have a rear rear and front dash cam. I have my cell phone with a mount so I can turn my cell phone camera on and it's pointing. So that's going. I could potentially have more cameras and, and audio in there. Have them running. Whenever you're, you're interfacing with any of these guys, have them running. And tell them they're running. Hey, you have a video and an audio going? Hey, so do I. And that keeps them more honest and hear them. Get it going, it's a movie. Oh. I became a member of the press. I became a member of the press, and I would take a press badge with me and a recording anytime I entered the courtroom. Because a member well, of the technically, you can't record in a courtroom under their laws without asking and letting them know ahead of time, unless mm -hmm. you're a member of the press. No, no even then they won't allow you. The only way you can do that is contemporaneous notes. Yeah. That's what they have the big pads for mm -hmm. to write the notes. You, you can't can have a recording device. You've got to notify them, and uh, you, some, some of them you got to ask ahead of time. I, 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 I set up a recording, uh, 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 my own, what is it, person to record the hearing? Sonographer. Yeah, with a video camera. And the judge stopped the video camera about two minutes, or about three minutes into the hearing. Even though I had pre-notified that it was going to be a video recording, so he he accepted my co contract, but then he altered it as you know as it was going on, and then he proceeded to uh, scam.
just keep in mind that it's almost at one o'clock. So okay, the yeah. Closes at like four or five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I need to get going. Yep. You need any help with that? And, uh, from and anybody? The, the other thing about I mean, keeping Boris's stuff, at, uh, uh, as his stuff, yes. Yes. is yes. so yes. that we can know if it works, if that's what works or not. Or, you know, well, that's exactly. I'm going to use precisely Boris's stuff. Boris. Let me re-ask the question. What help do you need right now? Well, I, I need to get to a... Uh, so thank you guys for listening thank to you. that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll, uh, we'll meet again after lunch. Okay. And... Uh, to get to